looking for gotta get my notebook gotta mm -hmm. change over interview let's see that there we go that works how are you uh i'm doing good doing good i usually don't wake up this early but uh i am wide awake now <laughs> um what what time is it where you are it is 10 a.m here normally i wake up around 12 but uh, you know ah it's always there's always like a good reason to wake up early it's always nice to have a reason to wake up yeah well i uh, thank you very much for you know inconveniencing yourself for our sake hmm. yeah, very kind um, of you. <laughs> uh, uh, i've been uh meaning to come on here for a while uh I know, I, I guess you've talked to every single other offline TV member, huh? I actually don't know if I have or haven't. Uh, Pokey, Lily, Skara, Michael, and Yvonne. So, yeah, they've all been on, so I'm here to help you finish your Co Infinity Gauntlet. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I mean, <laughs> do you feel pressured to come on because other people from OTV have come on? Uh, no, no. Um, I mean, people have tried pressuring me to go on, but I just say no. Okay. Um, uh, so the reason why I came on, uh, well, people have been asking, um, uh, for a while now, uh, cause I talk about like uh, a lot of my thought process and people are always like, oh, you should go on Dr. K. But the response <laughs> I've always given them is like, I don't feel like it's necessary and uh, because it's content i also had to reconcile like the fact that it's content but it's also meant to be like beneficial or like eye-opening experience for people to listen in um so i think your wife reached out to me saying hey you guys have free private sessions um, cause I think people from your side, like not your wife, but like people on your team have sent me like 10 emails. I can, sh I can show you the, uh, Twitter DMs. Not sure if you saw, but it's just like 10 requests for me to c come on the show. Oh, wow. Uh, which I've ignored. Uh, but, uh, I've, uh, <laughs> I just not big on replying, but I think your wife reached out saying, Hey, I, we have some free private sessions just for your own benefit. Um, which is also what made me agree to go on when the private session was offered. I'm like, oh, they're nice enough to offer a private session where there's no content to be made. So that's pretty chill of them. So yeah, I will go on the public session one. So, okay. Interesting. Uh, um, that's so how I got here. Well, I'm, I, I'm sorry that, you know, I, I didn't, uh, on behalf of my team, for which I take responsibility, if they were pestering you, I'm, I'm really sorry about that. Uh, no, no. No, not at all, not at all. Um, thanks for the feedback, because I'll, you know, we'll circle back because we we haven't really heard that from anyone else. We t we try to actually be quite respectful of people not wanting to come on. Um, I also am am, you know, it's kind of interesting. About seventy percent of the people that I've worked with, like I do for free historically, um, and I, I'm I'm wondering whether. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised to hear you say all that stuff. But I'm kind of, you know, if 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 I was, which is news to me, um, offering to meet with you privately for free, why? How would that motivate you to come on publicly if you didn't want to earlier? Like that's weird. Um, because it's a nice thing to do to offer like private therapy sessions, because uh, there's no gain essentially to be had right at least not immediate obvious gain um so and i felt like you know your wife was offering me a, a, a favor and she didn't have to so i like that um when people are nice yeah and i like being nice back so so uh, is it yeah uh, what what should I call you? Because I know you as Disguised Toast. I mean, I've been watching, like, I started watching your Hearthstone streams many, many years ago, probably. Wow. Like, back when, like, I, I also remember, I was watching you for a while because I think you made a lot of, like, meme-friendly content. 
mm-hmm. right? And if I remember the origin of your name, it's it's what the guy says when you coin out <laughs> Defias Bandit on turn one. <laughs> yeah, and, wow. You're an OG Hearthstone I am an fan. OG. Like, back when Chillwind Yeti was actually a solid card. Mm-hmm. You know? And then... Yeah. And so watched prior to, um, I, I still remember actually like one of the most memorable things was when someone leaked your face and I really loved your response video to that. Yeah. Um, that was a, wow, that was a long time ago. Yeah, man. And, and I, I still remember if I remember the sentiment correctly, you were like, this is for fun. It's not like I'm actually trying to hide. And like people are sort of taking it too far and like, it's fine. Like, I don't mind showing my face, but you know, the whole point was yeah. to like entertain people and it was kind yeah. of a meme. Yeah. Like it's, it's cooler to have like a gimmick, like mm-hmm. especially when you're starting out as a streamer and like starting out, it's, it's always awkward when you become a content creator on the internet. Cause my biggest fear was just like my friends finding out and making fun of me because it's it's kind of it's kind of like uh like being an internet streamer is one of those big dreams kids have nowadays you know they used to want to mm-hmm. be a singer or an actor but now it's like oh i want to be a video game streamer so uh hey, yeah can i just jump in what, what should i call you today do you, um you can call me toast Okay. Uh, most people call me toast. Like Jeremy's more intimate, but I don't know anyone like in my like friend group who calls me Jeremy. Do you want people to call you Jeremy? No, no, no. Okay. It weirds me <laughs> out at this point, just because it's, I'm just so used to hearing toast. Yeah. Um, and and so I, I want to just also take a step back for a second, uh, toast, and just sort of let's think this through. So. You know, if if we offered, if you, you know, we tried to do you a kindness and in return, you want to do a kindness to us, I can totally respect it. It's a hundred percent how I operate in my personal life. And I also want to be a little bit careful because, um, you don't have to do us a kindness. I know it's kind of weird because we're already streaming at this point. Right. But I, I, (laughs) I, I think that like, you know, I, I don't want you to feel, um, I mean, I, I, I sort of am getting the feeling or I'm interpreting that you're feeling kind of like almost a sense of like repayment, like you're, mm. you're, you're doing, you know, you're like paying a debt by coming on stream, um, which I think is going to be interesting because I'm like really curious whether that's a pattern that exists elsewhere in your life. Um, Right. And then, uh, but, but I I also want to be clear that like, I'm actually, okay. I know it's going to be weird and I know it's going to be anticlimactic, but like the only way that I can do this, because you're right that it's weird because it's like content and helping people. That's sort of like a a conflict of interest. If you think about it, right? Like, what am I really here for? And so the only way that I can resolve that conflict of interest is I actually am not here to help the internet. I'm here to help the person that I talk to. It's the only way that I can do this because otherwise it gets too confusing. Um, and by having that as my North Star, it actually makes all the decision making easy. And I know it sounds kind of weird, but like what that also means is like if you're here because you feel like you have to be here because we tried to do you a solid, we can just stop. And I'm totally fine with that. I- I'm I serious. Imagine, I know. I <laughs> just imagine the stream ending instantly five minutes in. And, um, and, but Toast, no. let's really think about that for a second, okay? Because like, like, I want you to think about like, what, what lesson does that teach people who are watching? Well, I think the world is definitely better off if every nice act was reciprocated with a nice act of its own, Uh, but without obligation to do so. I think there is an expectation, but not an obligation, if that makes sense, like. I, you know, do my friends a lot solid and sometimes rarely I would ask for one back, but when I do ask for one back, it's not an obligation, right? Cause I didn't, I wasn't nice to you with the expectation that you're nice to me back. But if I lend you $20 on Tuesday and next Friday, I ask for $10, like, Hey, can I get a loan of $10 and you pay for something and you say no. I would never like demand, hey, that's not fair. I gave you 20 bucks last week, but more like, 
in the back of my head, I'm going to mentally note, you know, I did a solid, but they weren't able to like do one back. And I think that's just human nature, right? I think absolutely um, the majority so, of people. Yeah. So I, I know it sounds kind of weird toast, but I think sometimes feelings of obligation get people to make sacrifices. And I know it's weird, but sometimes those sacrifices I don't think are actually healthy. Mm -hmm. Right. So like, like uh, we actually had a, one of our coaches brought up an interesting case. So there's a client who's in a relationship and, you know, I'm going to kind of anonymize it, but like, and they're, they, they're in a relationship where their partner sometimes has trouble and they feel obligated to help their partner even at significant cost to themselves. And it's actually like not a healthy situation because their partner is not actually like taking care of themselves. So they are forced to take care of their partner out of obligation. And every mm -hmm. time they make that sacrifice, it's like they're holding their partner up while like sacrificing their own life. Mm -hmm. and, and so, I, you know, I think acting out of obligation, like I think it's an honorable way to live. You seem like an honorable dude. Um, I read your tweet longer or your tweet longer <laughs> recently. And, mm -hmm. and so I, I think it's really cool to see like how you have an internal compass that drives you forward. Um, and, uh, but you know, I, I think it's important to kind of like, at least notice this pattern at this point, I don't think you're going to leave, but, <laughs> <laughs> no. but I, I think uh. it would be interesting, right? Because maybe you would be signaling to people that like, Hey, like just because you feel obligated to do something, if it's not something what you don't want to do, like you don't have to do it yeah uh definitely like um the whole reason why i am on here is because like i don't feel obligated to but um it's just nice i okay. guess to be able to do it um like when people badger me for something it makes me not want to do it more uh yep. and people have been asking me to go on i mean that's the whole reason why i haven't come on sooner is because i just didn't feel like it. Uh, people ask. I don't really feel obligated, but okay. it's like until I feel like, hey, you know, there's a good reason to. And I'm not sure if there's a good reason to right now, but... Uh, <laughs> I was about to ask, what's the good reason? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think, I mean, a week ago, there was the whole, that whole um, online drama stuff going on and coming back to California. But... Other than that, I've always felt my life was good enough, like, and did not have a reason to come on. But I always do like talking about streamer meta, like, what's it like being a streamer, uh, the stuff we think about, like, the money we make. A lot of, like, I like doing, like, an inside look at uh, a streamer's mindset and i think uh the healthy gamer show you know does something very similar where it's like an inside look at the you know the mental health of streamers mm -hmm. in general so i don't know we can talk about anything really i like yeah, talking that's... about spicy stuff like drama stuff it's you you said you do like or you don't like i do like um which is sometimes hard because you know we never want to leak names or like implicate people but i do like talking about like sensitive topics like money or like as sure you may learn like racism sexism like sometimes social issues but i actually don't like talking about those too much because i don't really have an opinion like gun laws and abortion sometimes I bring it up just to like <laughs> meme and make people uncomfortable but um the other topics is just well, more here, interesting. Yeah. So, Toast, you've always struck me as a thinker. You know, like, I know you meme, and I know you make fun content, and I know you're an entertainer. But I do get the sense that, like, behind that is, like, actually a lot of thought. And I think your, you know, your face reveal conversation was a good example of that. I still remember uh, watching a YouTube video where you went over, like, how much streamers make. And you kind of talked about sponsorships and things like that. Um, mm. and, and so, you know, I, I think if you enjoy talking about things that are a little bit at the edge of what's polite, 
I think that that's actually like really fantastic. I think a lot of what you're sh sharing is like per uh, aligned with like my personal goals and goals as an organization, because I think a lot of times we don't talk about the bad stuff, mm -hmm. right? We don't always, we're not, we don't always acknowledge like some of these issues and that that's part of the reason that they continue to go on because they're never brought to light. So I'd love to hear, you know, whatever juiciness you want to talk about. I mean, if you have any ideas about where we could get started. Um, uh, and then there are uh, one or two other thoughts uh, that I have, unless you have a direction you'd like to go. Uh, let's sort of go back to the conversation of like um, helping friends yeah. and expectation obligations. Yeah, so tell uh, me. It's, uh, hmm. I have a lot of expectation from my friends and people in my social circle. What does that uh, mean you have a lot of expectation from or towards? From them. Like they expect uh, a lot from you? And then I, uh, so I try to provide my friends with a lot of content and like help their career and like just whatever support they need, um, putting them in situations where like their talent can grow. And uh, I have this, I think one of my worries is like, it's like um, raising baby birds in a nest. And once they're ready to leave the nest, you know, letting them go, and hoping that they come back one day and like visit and not forget you. Or another analogy, well, streaming is like running a marathon and I don't mind slowing down to help my friends who are lagging behind or like tripping. But it always worries me that once they get up and running, like they just full sprinted down, not, like not look back, not try and slow down for anyone um not sure if i'm making sense but uh can i can i repeat back what i heard sure so what i'm kind of hearing is that you may slow down to help people up but then you're worried whether it's accurate or not that they may leave you behind that maybe one day you'll stumble and they're not going to look back yeah yeah I'd say so. How or like they won't, they won't even like slow down for their friends, not necessarily me, because I'm generally okay by myself. Um, like I've, my career has always been like at the forefront. Mm -hmm. But like, like if they had friends, like they won't even slow down for them. So it's just that the scene is constantly about the chase, right? Like. The numbers, the getting ahead, being top dog. It's just the grind nonstop. So whenever I do see like kindness, like it speaks a lot to me. You try hard to be a kind person. Yeah, yeah. Try my best. What do you give up by doing that? Nothing really. Like, I feel like people are always saying like they have sacrifices to make, but uh, I feel like I never give anything up because their talent was already there, like, and their humor. So, like, I also just gain benefit just by being around them, like being in the good content uh, that's happening. So I don't feel like I ever give anything up i feel like i'm more just unlocking their potential that they've always had so it's not like oh i could have had a bigger stream or i could have had a bigger presence if i didn't help them it's never like that i always i only benefit from people's success so um it's just that small worry that uh people are always seeking that next level like, all right, what's going to get me more viewer? Who's bigger than me that I can collab with now that I'm bigger? So l let me see if I'm kind of getting you. So on, on the one hand, 
you know, I, I, it's kind of interesting because you're sort of saying that like, okay, there's the scene, right? And the scene is the grind and growing and like always like, okay, it, can I collab with Toast? Oh, wow. Like Toast is collabing with me. And then like part of the nature of the beast is like they're going to grow and then like they're going to collab with someone else, right? Because at some point we're going to reach Toast. We're going to pass Toast. And there's toast back there, but like, let's keep going up. And, and your experience is that you don't, it's not like you sacrifice a whole lot in supporting people. That sounds like you genuinely really do enjoy helping people reach their full potential. Um, that you also notice that there is kind of like a benefit, right? Because if you find someone who is talented and you unlock their potential, like you guys can create content together, that content is ultimately like improved the more people you know if you get multiple people in, involved you can make more than what you could make on your own mm -hmm. so i'm not hearing you making any kind of like noble sacrifice like oh my god <laughs> no, i helped you no, so no. much yeah and i gave you my kidney <laughs> <laughs> yeah like the reason why i don't feel like too bad about it because at the end of the day it's like they are just talented by themselves they're just not in the right situation sure you know, like sure in the right game or have the right collab partners sure so sure you sound like yeah. you're very good at kind of um enabling people like yes sort of, yeah yeah i would um, say that's like one of my best talents is not it's just recognizing good content because I feel like I myself is am pretty limited by like what is possible because at the end of the day, like I am like sarcastic. My I have a sarcastic persona. Um and my games that I'm good at are very like thinking logical, like nerdy games. And I always felt like I have like a ceiling. That is more obvious than um, other people might have. So I like seeing like how far other people can go. Sure. So where do you think that fear comes from? The th fear of sort of being left behind. Uh... Hmm. So, Dr. K, I don't know if you know this about me, but... <laughs> When I talk about feelings, I start tearing up. It's not because I don't know why. It's not. It's never because I'm sad. Because I'm just talking about stuff. Um, but when I talk about things that are a little more emotional in nature, like my tear duct just start like you know start trying to. I think it's because like I don't talk about emotions much, so my brain is thinking, oh, if he's talking about emotion, he must be sad and he wants to cry. So let's make him cry. Um, it's funny because it's so stupid and I need to get my point across but I can't because when That's I try okay. <laughs> so people have disappointed me since I came to California when you're a solo streamer it's like I'm going to the top, fuck all of you kind of deal. Like, I I had drama with, like, quite a few Hearthstone streamers when I was coming up. Just, like, looking back, it's just stupid, but it's, like, an ego shit talk battle of who's the best streamer kind of deal. Or like, stuff like that. Um, but when you have friends and you collab with people and it gets really complicated and my policy is i generally will just support someone especially my friends do and like host them and like appear on their streams and just like genuinely want them to do well and to be able to make a living off it a lot of situations have turned out fine but there are quite a few situations that you know if you have followed otv's history um has gone really bad and we don't really interact with those people anymore and it's like it's happened quite a few times and it's people like 
I trusted. So, yeah. So, how you holding up, man? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I just I I know like these things I can talk about, and like they're normal to talk about. I just need practice talking about it. Um, but you know, it happened a few times, actually. So it wasn't even like a one-off thing. Can and then there's like smaller versions of that that get settled internally too as well. Okay. Um, can I ask? So when I when I asked you a question, you got emotional. Do you know what emotion you were feeling? Ah, uh, not sadness. I think okay. uh, it's just. Oh, this is like sensitive stuff. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I I, I, think, I got that impression too that there's some, I, what I what I saw in you is like remembering a hurt. I don't know. I don't feel that hurt by it. Honestly, I I don't know if that's where the fear comes from. It's just like an easy example to point to and say, you know, the there are people that I did believe in that end up uh, doing not so great things. So is that like feeling betrayed, disappointed? Uh, I think disappointed mostly because they don't usually end up hurting me or they just end up doing st something stupid that hurt other people. What happens if um, someone does hurt you? Oh, that one is more just anger and like vindictive. I'm a very petty person and I remember the wrongs that are done to me. Okay. <laughs> uh, there's not a lot of them, but I am the type to kind of hold on to grudges. Um, but I usually react with anger or revenge uh, if I'm personally like upset at by someone's action. Will you let me know if I get close to making an enemy of you? <laughs> of course. Uh, usually, it's like really. Let me know like if I get over close. The line. <laughs> yeah. So let me know where that line is. Okay. Got it. <laughs> I I do not want to wind up across the other side of that border. I, I wouldn't say there's really. I don't have any enemies right now. Uh, at most, I just have people I don't like interact with. So. When someone says to me that I'm a vindictive person who has no enemies, <laughs> there's a part of me that wonders, yeah, you have no enemies left. Because <laughs> they're uh, all six feet under at this point. <laughs> but I, don't know. I, I, I like, I like, um, beating people. Like, uh, when I was streaming TFT when it first came out, like, I made it a point to stream over. The time slot of my competition so i think the first month i was doing 12 hour streams and they were like time so that i start right before the first like big tft streamer gets on and i end right after the last big tft streamer finishes for the day um so like i really and my attitude that time was just like i'm gonna i'm gonna bury this guy and I don't, I don't really in, like have a problem with them. It's just the competition of being a streamer. But like when I had to do back then, was like, I mean, like you gotta stay in second place, and I'm gonna be first place and have the viewers. Mm -hmm. um, but now that you know, I'm on Facebook and I'm in my killing years. Um, it's a lot less antagonistic and more just. Hey, you know, you get you, your you, friends, you guys want to play some games? Let's, you know, you want, you know, I can pop by your stream. And I think that's one nice thing about being on Facebook is uh, I can just provide content to my friends without thinking, oh, you know, well, what about my stream? You know, why mm -hmm. are we having this stream on my stream? So 
um yeah i'm i'm at a pretty nice place right now in terms of providing content but that's kind of what my attitude used to be when it comes to like competition so toast i'm gonna can i just think for a second So there, there, are, there are a lot of different things that are kind of popping in my mind. I'm not quite sure what has significance. So one is, um, you know, you mentioned that things were a little bit, uh, you know, unharmonious or not harmonious during the early stages of Hearthstone or maybe when you were a Hearthstone streamer, there was some kind of conflict I think we talked a lot about sort of this, um, you know, you describe it as a small fear because you strike me as a pretty resilient guy where like if you do have issues or call them whatever you want to, you seem to be like pretty good at like setting those aside, kind of being able to do your work, finding compassion, sort of like not feeling super burnt out. You seem to really be about, you know, supporting other people and that feels very genuine to me. Like I don't think you're, you know, trying to grow someone just so you can farm people to collaborate with. It's sort of like you recognize that this person is talented and you recognize that by making content with them, it sort of helps you grow, helps them grow. All seems super genuine to me. Um, and there, there are a couple of things that I'm not quite sure how to connect. Um, but one is sort of this idea that like, it's almost like, you know, I'm going to toss out a strong word here, which is like abandonment. But when I kind of think about the birds in the nest, it's like they're going to leave and they're never going to come back. Mm -hmm. And that sounds a touch like like one word, you know, if we want to use a big word, like maybe a little bit hyperbole, maybe a little bit extreme is like abandonment. Um, it sounds like sometimes people have sort of like wronged you in the past. And, and then they're, they're, this is where I, I get kind of confused about whether this is related or not. Um, is there is this kind of idea of like you kind of mentioned that you have a, a ceiling right in the games that you play mm -hmm. and that you're kind of aware of what your ceiling is and that's why you gravitate towards games like hearthstone or tft because you're never going to have the reflexes of the Fortnite pros or this or that right like you can and even if we think about you know your your hearthstone content like um uh, hopefully this doesn't let me know if this evokes any kind of hurt but like you're not known for being the best at Hearthstone. Like the reason mm -hmm. that your content was great was because it was very entertaining. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering whether there's a correlation between sort of this idea that I have a ceiling, the fact that other people will sort of like leave you behind at some point because there's only so fast that you can run. Mm -hmm. Um because if you kind of, and then also like on the flip side, whether that like kind of manifests as like, I'm going to be number one, bitches, you know, like striving to be number one. And I don't know if any of those things are actually related. I mean, they can all be independent. Uh, it's just, those are the three things that I'm kind of feeling are like floating to the surface. Mm -hmm. And and when it comes to being vindictive, being hurt, um, you know, there's a part of me that almost wants to ask the question like, and I think the answer, oddly enough, is yes, but for a little while I thought it was no. Like, would you know what feeling hurt felt like? Mm, I, th yeah, yeah, I th think so. I think I, um, I don't like it when people violate my trust. Like, I tell you, hey, X secret. And I say, don't tell anyone. And they end up telling someone. Like, I think that's the biggest way to, like, get on my bad side. Yeah, so, I th yeah. yeah, so I, I think, like, I feel like there are stronger words popping up here because that sounds like betrayal to me. Yeah. And, yeah I'm and, very harsh with my friends when they do that. Yeah, so, so when it comes to, and then now we circle back to, like, expectations. So I'm kind of thinking about, Okay, Toast, I know you're here. I know everyone, including us, wanted you here. And so, like, I know that everyone's being satisfied. But, like, my question is still, like, how can we help you as a person? You know, like, is there something that, not that you need help, because this also, like you kind of said earlier, that life is good enough. 
Whereas like, I don't think you, the people, in fact, I think we've created this bias where like people come on here because they've got some problem or some issue or some difficulty. Whereas like, it's really my belief that like, you know, you can always climb, like it doesn't, you don't, and everyone should be trying to climb, right? Like you can always grow as a person. Um, what I'm kind of curious about is whether, and I think if you want to, if you feel like any of this is relevant or important to you, um, I can lay out an argument of why I think it may be worth exploring, but I'm just curious, mm -hmm. like what resonates with you? Uh, mm -hmm. Mm. Nothing really pops out. Okay. Like, like I don't think I have any problems, like emotionally. Um, I don't think so either. But, so. Yeah. Can like, I ask? I... Go ahead. Yep. Can I ask you? Um. Are, how How are your romantic relationships? Ah, uh, romantic relationships. I. <laughs> I don't know. Um. You're allowed to not answer, by the way, if it's not something you want to talk about. I. It's a. Uh, I... And if you want me to explain why I'm asking, I'm happy to. Uh, I won't go into too much detail. That's one of the problems with being like a public figure talking about, because I've had a public relationship and that one, the, the amount of backseaters and people commentating on it is just really annoying. So since then I've, kept my romantic life relatively private. Like I talk about bits here and there. Uh, I kind of like not like being in a committed relationship right now. Cause I think it's a lot of work and. Can I sh toss something out toast? Why? Yeah. Ask? So here's sometimes when I work with, people like you and I'm making a lot of assumptions. So I think like maybe what we need to do is just, you know, I'll ask you some basic questions like about your life and stuff, but here's, here's, I'm going to, I'm going to take a shot in the dark. Okay. It's mm -hmm. going to be like one of these like, um, high risk, high reward. I'm making some hearthstone deck where I have no <laughs> cards between that are one to five mana. They're all mm -hmm. like, they're all <laughs> legendaries that start at six. Got okay. It. Uh, so, so, the one in a hundred games where this works out and I survived turn sex six, it's, it's mm -hmm. GG. Wow. Before we get mm -hmm. slipped there. Um, but so here's, here's what I'm concerned about is that I think you have like, I don't know how to put this, but you have a meta in your mind. You have like a set of rules, right? Like you operate, you have a strong internal code. You have, there's like a whole system that isn't really in the game. It's like, like, it's in your mind. Like you have a strong set of internal rules through which you operate by. And that like, like other people may not understand those rules, right? It dictates how you stream. It di dictates how you relate to other people. It dictates like, it's kind of like this honor system that you've got going on in here that sometimes it's kind of disappointing because people outside of you don't adhere to that honor system. And the reason I ask about romantic relationships is sometimes when you have honorable vindictive people, Okay. And that, sorry if that's, you know, a bad way of putting it. Um, but like you describe yourself as petty and vindictive, but you're clearly like a good dude, right? Like, and, and so like when you have that kind of pattern in your mind, sometimes it creates a lot of confusion and trouble, especially in romantic relationships, because the person mm -hmm. on the other side of the table, you're like playing with this meta that isn't apparent on the game board. Because the meta is not like, you know, the game board is the game board, but it's like, it's weird. Like I like, and you're coining out Defias Bandits and it's like, I thought we were doing no rush 20, 
you know, like, mm-hmm. and, and so sometimes it can be confusing for other people. So I was just kind of wondering, you know, that's why I ask about romantic relationships, because I wonder if, um, you know, to put it really like specifically shot in the dark, cause we haven't asked you anything about them, but you know, whether people, whether you feel like really let down by expect by someone not living up to expectations and specifically whether that person didn't realize at all that that expectation was being placed upon them. Mm-hmm. Does that uh, make any I sense? Think, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I think it's just, from my point of view, these expectations are very obvious, like very human courtesy expectations. But I can also see like, it doesn't apply to everyone. It's just, you know, because I do have like, a strong sense of like what's right and what's wrong that to me it seems very straightforward very clear cut yeah you're supposed to behave like this you're supposed to act like that um one thing i've learned from uh talking to the ladies (laughs) is that they're i tend to be on a very logical scale and they are generally more emotional than i am um because being right used to be like the most important thing for me uh not like that i had to be right but like in an argument if you're in an argument with someone one of you should be right you know there are some stuff like oh should abortions be legal like that's an argument where it's just two guys arguing like there's no defined correct answer but a lot of arguments like uh, someone being rude, I feel like there's a clear cut right person, wrong person. And uh, I had that attitude when it came to relationship. It's like, hey, you know, we were trying to solve a problem and you snapped at me and now we're fighting. So you kind of like broke a rule, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I feel more justified and entrenched because you violated you know what could have been a proper way to communicate now it's like name calling or like being petty um yeah so i'm i'm hearing a lot of what i was thinking maybe be going on which is that but because i I think you say like you know because in your mind they violated a rule but i I know i'm sure that you know you're logical and have in in here but the point is i think like i I know it's kind of bizarre but like sometimes like you've got a meta up here though about how the game should be played Mm -hmm. and and sometimes i see conflict because the metas and the minds of the people that you relate to may not be the same as your meta does that make sense yeah yeah um makes sense people have told me that uh my way of thinking is not always correct and uh, that i should be nicer or like be more accepting of people's flaws but i think that's a big i think we have enough of that in our friend group where we just accept people's shortcomings and their flaws and they're just like, yeah, well, that's just who they are. Um, so I tend to be more strict on stuff like that where, you know, if someone does something bad, I want to have a sit down with them. Like, I want to sit them down like in my room and explain to them like why what they did wasn't okay. A little confrontational and i like a tiny like i like having friends and being close to people and like having people to rely on but i'm also afraid that uh, people get too familiar with you like when like people always say your best friends are the one that gives you a lot of shit kind of deal um Respect is really important to me, and I would love for my friends to like like me and love me, but it doesn't hurt sometimes when there's a little bit of fear as well. 
which now that I've said it out loud, people are going to be like more aware of it. But um, what is it? can you help us understand that? Uh, I, I don't quite understand. I, I lost you there. <laughs> uh, have you have you have you seen Game of Thrones? Yeah. Yeah. You know, people love Daenerys Targaryen, but some people are also afraid of her. But in both cases, it makes them treat that person with respect. Does that and, make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So have you been... I feel like a story would, you know, tell a thousand words here, but like, I'll just kind of ask, have you been like... taken advantage of because of your kindness? Mm, no. No, no, no. No. I don't think people... Like, I don't think... I think I'm smart enough to know when someone's trying to take advantage of me. Um... Yeah, I don't think I've been taken advantage of. I think it's more just like, hey, you know, you seem cool. You know, I'll work, I'll play with you. I'll, you know, talk about you, you know, on stream and like try and boost your numbers. Just, you know, be the best person you can. And then they go and do some shady shit. And it really sucks when that happens. What sucks? Or they... Ah. It's like, cause I don't know. It just sucks when people you believe in disappoint you. You know, not it's they never do anything to me. They just do something objectively shitty, and um, or they just like leave the nest and don't interact with like the people they used to interact with anymore. And how, that, <sighs> how does that feel when they do that? It's like, oh, just another one for the history books. Like, it happens so often in my mind that when it doesn't happen, like, it's really surprising to me. Mm -hmm. Like, I have the expectations, like, you're just going to one day not, like, gonna be around anymore but maybe you'll surprise how, me how long ago did you learn that lesson that people just don't stick around uh, I, know, I guess a year ago um When I was uh, in elementary school, I remember sharing a popcorn chicken with uh, this kid in class. And uh, he just kind of like acted as if, ha, I just got a free popcorn chicken off you when I wanted to share it with him. And when he had gum later, like, and I, hey, can I have a piece of gum? He's like, ha, no kind of deal and you know that memory sticks out as like an example of like when, when you help people the expectation is like don't expect them to like return the favor like i'm surprised when people reciprocate kindness these days Can you like, tell i feel me like that should be the norm like sure. when you help someone but like these days when someone does like show appreciation for me, it catches me off guard. Yeah, I think especially in the world that you live in, there's sort of friendship. And then some of y'all are in the business of friendship. You know, where being friends is actually not, it's like a business decision. 
and and I, I imagine that makes things quite tough. But can yeah. I ask you? Can I ask you a little bit more about like when you were younger, like prior to? Because I it was kind of confusing because you said I was like, when did you learn that lesson? And you were like about a year ago, and then you told me a story from kindergarten <laughs> with popcorn, chicken, and gum. So yeah. you know, I'm I'm kind of noticing that maybe you've been on the maybe you've been burned i mean it sounds like you got burned by it pretty early sort of like doing yes. good onto others and others taking advantage of you and not doing what was right just the uh, small i think i i just place a lot of emphasis of being considerate sure um can you tell me a little bit about where you grew up uh okay uh, i grew up uh in Malaysia. So I was born in Taiwan, but like when I was less than one years old, uh, my family moved to Malaysia and I grew up there for about 10 years. And I kept switching between an English and a Chinese school. So my Chinese wasn't great and my English wasn't amazing. And when I moved to Canada, I had like the Malaysian version of English, which is you know, heavily accented. And like uh, the word three, like I had such a huge problem pronouncing it three because I, I would say tree and it took like a long time. Uh, I had an immense fear of public speaking, like the worst ever. Like I would just go up and just read from a piece of paper and I know you're not supposed to do that because you're supposed to make eye contact. But I remember one presentation, I'm like, fuck it, I am not taking my eye off the piece of paper and looking at people's reaction to my presentation. Um, you know, had that whole like Asian identity growing up thing of like bringing home cooked meals, but people, the kids at school having like a negative reaction to the home cooked meal. And my mom ended up making like bologna ketchup sandwiches instead because, you know, she doesn't want me to feel like I'm standing out. Uh, I learned how to do, oh, for the first year of high school, grade nine, I didn't speak to anyone. Like I went the entire year without uh, talking to anyone besides the yes and no that my teachers would ask me. Uh, I think in grade 11, I made an effort to be social. So I learned how to do magic tricks so that I could interact with people and like entertain people because I like being an entertainer. Um, I was going to be a game designer initially because for me, that's how I could become an entertainer. Like I couldn't be like a streamer because it wasn't really a thing back then or an actor or a singer, but I could design games that people would enjoy since I played a lot of games. Um, but I picked up like magic tricks as a way to entertain people and that slowly improved my ability to perform in a public setting. Um, so, yeah, that kind of set me down on a path of being an entertainer. Hmm. Fascinating, man. I'm so happy you shared that. I, I don't know why, but I, I really just really enjoyed hearing about your what growing up was like for you, even though it sounds pretty rough, bro. No, no, I, it didn't feel rough. It feel, it felt like, like looking back, it might seem a little sad, but when it was in the moment, it didn't feel like it was that hard. I just, it just felt like, oh, this is what life is, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. It, and you mentioned your, you know, your mom was quite thoughtful about, you know, feeding you trash to help you fit in, you know, setting aside uh, some of her own values. Um, uh, yeah, she was just worried that the kids would make comments. Yeah. And, and how did she, how did she get worried about that? Was that because of something you said? Do you remember? I don't, maybe my sister said something, but, um, Sisters older or younger? Uh, old. I have an older sister and an older brother. How much older? Uh, 
Uh, well, my brother's seven years older, and my sister is two years older. Mm. Yeah, their sister's getting married, and uh, my brother just had a child, so they're growing up, and I'm still playing video games on the internet. I would assume that that was a joke. Huh? That. You actually have no problem playing games on the internet. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's crazy how like uh, oh they're getting like how how like we people from my high school are literally married and have children by now. But like this industry we're in, it's like people are just playing games, playing games, playing games. How do you feel? And about that? Uh, I think it's cool. Uh, I think I'm not ready to be old just yet. And uh, it's just crazy that some people are the same age, but so many different phases of their lives. Like, like their kids are some kids are like five years old by now. It's, it's... Yeah, yeah. What do you, do the people and do you stay in touch with anyone in high from high school? Oh, I stay in touch with nobody. Not a single person. Um. I do have two friends that I should stay in touch with because they were my best friends in high school, but it's just been so long. I feel awkward uh, re-engaging, so I'm just essentially waiting until I get married or one of them get married to reach out again. It's like, hey, want to come to my wedding? It sounds like you need an excuse to re-engage with them. Yeah, yeah. And can you tell me a little bit about uh, your dad? Or... Oh, my dad, he worked most of his life um, in another country. So didn't really grow up with one. Uh, he works really hard. He's more of a traditional kind of guy, you know, older, like more family values. We must always be together for Chinese New Year's. Uh, not that strict in terms of uh, you know just do what you want to do but he nags a lot and complains a lot um, which is always hard uh, but you know not too much uh, problems there I, I find myself wanting to ask um, what he nags about or what he complains about, but I'm also wondering whether in the meta of your mind, it's not acceptable to talk about things like people in your family and negative aspects of them on the internet. Um, hmm. I, I don't mind talking about it a little bit. Like, I think everyone has like family issue and sure. everyone like, just typical Chinese dad stuff. Um, <laughs> Can you please tell us about typical Chinese dads? Like, it's uh, a good example. Oh, like uh, when we were fishing, you would keep complaining how I didn't have the right lure because I'm not catching any fish. And like when other people on the pier are catching fishes, it's like, look at them. They have the right lure. This one's not the right one. You got the wrong one. And then I started catching fishes like 30 minutes later. And like the whole time I was thinking like, no, I know what lure they're using. I got the exact same one. This is the right one. But it's like he just assumes, like, at least from my point of view, he just assumes something was wrong. So, like, I did something wrong, and he's going to complain about it. But yeah. um, it was just, like, it's just the nature of fishing. You know, I wasn't going to catch one right away. But, like, stuff like that, where it's just, like, bro, I just am here to spend time with you, to catch fish with you, and I have to keep listening to how I got the wrong lure, even though I know it's the right one. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot of stuff like that. It's It's got to be rough to... I mean, I, I know you're used to it, and I know it's typical. 
you know, I, I, I'm Indian, so I, I think that there's a, a lot of commonality between typical like Chinese dads and typical Indian dads. Um, at the same time, I, I've got to imagine it's like frustrating to be blamed for lack of skill when it's RNG. Yeah, yeah. Like, I feel like I can't be allowed to make mistakes because, like, because like when you learn to do something, you're gonna make a lot of mistakes. Like, first time you learn to knit, like, or ride a bike, you're gonna make a lot of mistakes. But it's just a pain in the ass when like your dad is next to you, like paying so much attention. So the second you make a mistake, he just says, well, that's wrong. And you're thinking, well, obviously I know it's wrong, but how am I going to know what works and what doesn't unless I'm actually trying to learn? Um, but I didn't tell him any of that because I didn't want to snap at him. And like, he's at a pretty old age and I'm at an age where I should be accepting and understanding and just saying, oh, that's just dad being dad. But uh, it does make it difficult to spend time with him sometimes. Hmm. I'm just thinking about whether... Yeah, thanks for sharing that. I, I was just trying to think about whether it's worth talking about further or not. Uh, probably not. Um, That's the family life stuff is just like, Do it is what it is. Yeah. So it, it sounds like you've learned a lot from your dad's mistakes. Um, at the same time, I'm wondering whether you've internalized any of that approach in the way that you interact with other people. Uh, someone brought it up to me and say, when I was complaining about my dad, they're like, Tos, that kind of sounds like you because you complain a lot about people as well. And when they said it, I'm like, yeah, you're kind of right. I do like, because from my point of view, I, it's, it would be similar to my dad where you just want people to like do better. Like let's say they're doing a golf swing and I'm in the back saying, oh, you should adjust five degrees here. But I just do it for everything. Like when people are streaming or like when they're playing Valorant and I'm backseating them, I'm like, yeah, you should take a look to your left here. And like, you know, you should go do this, go to do that. And I can see how I am similar in that sense. So since then, I've been a little more aware at giving feedback because I know some of my friends are more receptive to it. And some of my friends are more like, Bro, why can't you just just be happy for me, man? Or like, just if I if they get eighty percent on a test, I need to not focus on. Well, this is how you should should have gone a ninety percent or a hundred percent. So, uh, I think it did subconsciously rub off of me on me, and um, yeah, like uh, the whole thing about like having respect. I think as a result of that, what do you like mean I am that? becoming like my dad, when we eat dinner or lunch, like the rule is nobody touches the food until he does. And like a lot of Asian uh, superstition kind of deal and like tradition, like we always have to be there for Chinese New Year. Um, I think played a role in like how much respect you should show to your peers, to the elders. Very Asian Chinese stuff, I guess. Yeah, so I, th I can definitely see the cultural component. So I'm, I'm going to circle back to romantic relationships for a second. Do you see this behavior as sort of influencing your romantic relationships? Uh... Mm. I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I've only been in one real relationship, so I am not an expert on it. Um, yeah. Um, I, 
Toast, I'm not quite sure where to go. So so here's <laughs> here's where do you have any idea what we should talk about today? Uh hmm. Any good drama lately? Uh well, there was that whole drama I was involved in last week, but honestly, that's kind of over with. Um, Why are you interested? Why are you looking for drama to talk about? I don't know. It's more interesting. I guess uh, I like talking about things that people find interesting. And, uh, yeah, that's my concern. Right. So mm -hmm. like, like, okay. do you want to talk? Are we here for people or are we here for you? Uh, well, I've said this before, um, a while ago is that my biggest worry with coming on the show is that like, I'm really smart when it comes to like PR and marketing and I worry that the things I say on this show is designed to evoke some kind of positive feelings towards me. It's like, oh, Toast is so genuine, or Toast is so vulnerable, or Toast is so, like, whatever. Now that we had the inside look into how his mind works, we see what a wonderful person he is. And um, because I am very capable of doing that. Like when, when I got signed to Facebook and I donated like the $20,000 budget to children, the children's hospital, right? Like, did I do that because I'm a benevolent person? No, I did it because I knew signing with Facebook was going to be unpopular and this was a great opportunity to do something nice for sick children and also to get some good PR. So Toast, here's what I'm feeling from you. You're saying just enough. And, and so I, I don't know exactly, like I can imagine that there's some, there are a bunch of different calculations or variables in your mind right now to where like, I'm detecting some amount and I, I don't know, I, I don't want to like expose that or bully you because like, I want to respect your emotional boundaries and your privacy. But I also get the sense that it's like just enough. And I think like, we're not really talking about anything. Mm-hmm. Or like we're, we're talking about stuff, but we're not saying anything. And does that make sense? Mm, kind of like, I feel like we would never talk about anything that I didn't really want to talk about. Maybe I should talk about, but. Yeah, so I think that's what's going like, so I, I think that like, I, I need to understand from you, you know, whether because because I try to talk to people like what I want to talk, I want to talk to Jeremy, I don't want to talk to Toast, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think what we're here is, is to do is to try, like, at least what I'm here to do is to try to help you. But I think we can talk about like, if you feel more comfortable doing societal commentary, if you feel more comfortable, you know, having everyone get emotionally engaged with drama so that we don't have to like talk about you like that's fine like you're allowed to say i don't want to talk about this but what i'm kind of what i'm feeling from you is that you know you're, you're like sharing some stuff about your family but like at the end of the day like there are a thousand questions here that i feel unsafe asking because i i think that you and i are like doing a little bit of tango where we're like skirting around a lot of stuff mm-hmm and and so I think what we've got to do is kind of take a step back. How do you feel right now if I say something like that? Like, do you feel pinned down or attacked in some way? Uh, I think it's pretty accurate. I just don't know, like, at least consciously, I don't know where that wall is. Like, I think it'd be easier 
for you to like press on something and like if i try to like deflect or like so minimize it or only give you we, crumbs here we go yeah. why is there a wall in the first place uh because we are in a public setting and there are viewers and not just viewers live here but like people who are gonna watch the vods and put it up on youtube like that's a they're... really good answer but i don't think that you have a wall just when you're streaming on the internet mm. that's an uh -huh. answer that i can never argue against because you're right mm -hmm. and i think you're hiding behind it mm. what walls do you have when no one is on camera when no one is on camera. Uh, I don't really talk much when there's no camera on. Like, I'm a introvert. So, so I, I'm normally really quiet around my friends. Yeah, good. So that's a wall. It's not just because you're an introvert. Right? So, like, now we get to the crux of the problem. It's like, you can be toast, but, like, I think the problem here is that I'm not interested in talking to Toast. I'm interested in talking to Jeremy. This is a conversation between two human beings. Like, at least for me. Like, that's the only way I can do this. Like, personally. Like, I can't, you know, like, don't give us a show, Toast. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I, like, like... I, uh, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Uh, I feel like my entire like life is just being an entertainer being like being on on display like when i play even when i play games with friends like i would want someone to be streaming it's like um it's really weird for me to play games and no one is streaming it it's really weird for me to do like anything without it being content because my mind is just constantly thinking like um how do we turn this into like entertainment for the masses right why does your mind do that uh i think people i i like making people laugh and i like entertaining people and why do you like kind of that? I, uh I think it's because I didn't have friends in high school until I became like a magician and I entertain people. So I kind of associate being entertaining to a lot of my self-worth. So if you don't entertain us today, what are we going to see? <sighs> see, that question seems so strange to me. Like, I have to entertain people. Like, this conversation is entertaining to people, right? Like, that's why people are watching right now. It's because it's not entertaining in this traditional sense of, like, a blockbuster film, but, like, it's interesting to observe, I mean, right? Yeah, so, sorry, I was going to toss out a joke. Well, it is, we are talking with this guy's toast, so if there's blockbuster-level entertainment, this is where you find it. <laughs> So what what would we see if we if you don't entertain us? More Let's see, if there's no camera and we're talking one on one and it's like a real therapy session like completely private, how would I behave? Um probably talk about my more selfish tendencies. Like, I feel like I put enough bad stuff out there so that people realize that streamers are human beings and have flaws and selfish thoughts. Like, I feel like I put just enough out there that people go, ah, see, Tosis. Like, you know, he's got good stuff and he's got bad stuff. But, Why is it like, important for other people to not view you all as good? 
Uh, I think it makes me more human and relatable. And I, 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 in Hearthstone, there are streamers who brand themselves as super positive, but I hate them because so toast. The they're problem. really bad. Uh-huh. Yep, I'm gonna just keep interrupting you. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Tell me, no tell worries. me if I'm coming up on the line of being your enemy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Why do you, so you say it makes me dot dot dot? I'm with you there. But why do you have to be made into something? In the first place. All right, it's all a mask, bro. Like even the bad stuff. It's like it's kind of like here I have a, a a glass of clear water. Let me put a drop of black ink into it because this looks too pure. And like what I'm getting from you is that like like you you kind of told us like you're always an entertainer. You don't know how to not be an entertainer. But an entertainer is not who you are. It's how you've come to relate to people. And what I'm curious about is like what's going on with Jeremy who's behind the mask of toast. Mm. I don't know. I haven't uh, really thought about myself, like, as a person. Like, all I care about is making content, really, and just trying to be a good friend to people. Uh, Because... I don't think it's a bad thing to base your happiness on how much you help other people, like your friends. Like, like I get a lot of joy when I see my friends succeed and like I see them happy. Uh, that I don't really like. If you ask me what makes me happy, like besides of oh, getting more viewers or getting more money. Um, who tries to make you happy? Uh, few of my friends, uh, my close friends, uh, here in California, where they, you know, try to like, they always tell me I should do things that make me happy and not care too much about like helping my friends but whenever they make those suggestions I, I like i can't even think of something that i would do for myself that would make me happy but i can think of like a hundred things i can do for my friends to make them happy which i feel like would in turn make me happy i think there's a lot of value to altruism but what would you say if if a friend of a friend came to you and said I don't know how to make myself happy, but I know how to make everyone around me happy. Uh, I only think it's a problem when that person who's helping others sacrifice their own happiness and their own mental health to do so. Um, because there, there is someone like that in our friend group and she's like constantly taking on the problems of everyone like if someone one of her girlfriends is feeling sad or like someone's going through drama like she will be the person to like listen to all of that and i see the mental toll it takes on them like because it's so much sad and negative energy that they're taking in on behalf of other people like they they Revolve their identity around being like that supportive friend. And uh, and what's your identity? I mean, I I have a a very distinct identity. I feel like of mm. just you know being reliable, but also being having a giant ego. But, Do you have a giant ego? That's my persona. I started leaning into it when back when uh, Tyler One and Doctor Disrespect was being popular. 
because I would look at them and see like how much fans they would have, and like Toast, people love it. Do you it. have a big ego? I do. Really? I th I think so. I think okay. my ego matches like my success. Um. So I think your first answer, I I put more seems right to me you have the persona of having a big ego i think what i'm hearing from you is like I, I don't know it seems to me like toast has dominated jeremy like completely like i, I think that you're a good dude i think you're resilient i think you care about your friends um i also hear that what you figured out is a formula that like oh if i make my friends happy that in turn makes me feel good about myself Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but there's something weird going on here man like there's something about like you being an entertainer like all the time and that's why i sort of ask about like your romantic relationships because like i, I think that oftentimes because there's there's like a certain degree of reciprocity in romantic relationships there's a certain degree of like authenticity where i, I think like what i'm almost hearing from you is like you're signaling to like you it's so weird. It's nuanced. I don't even know if I'm right here, but like something about, you know, showing a little peep, like a little bit of the bad stuff makes you come across as like a little bit more authentic. But there, there's this part, there's this part here where like, I think that, you know, if I had to just really make a blind judgment here, and I think this is probably where I'm going to be wrong, uh, because I, I think you're pretty well constituted for lack of a better term. I'd say, like, I'm worried that you're afraid of what would happen if you stop being an entertainer. And I think that the reason that you show people bad stuff is because you're testing the waters. Yeah, you're seeing... Daddy, Daddy, mm -hmm. Pierre's crying. Okay, can... Can you... Pierre's crying, Dad. Can you come? Yeah, hold, hold on one second. No, take as long as you need. What happened? Hello, chat. Left alone in a room with this guy's toast, huh? No doctor to help you. Oh, crap, he's coming back. Man, just when I was going for the throat. <laughs> it's going for the OTK. Um, but, like, the concern that I have, toast, is that, like, you know, so it's interesting because you, you come across like, so like, I'm, I'm just going to start from the top. Okay. And, and like, I may be completely out of line here. So just tell me to go fuck myself at any point. Okay. So, you know, like you grew up in a world where you were used to being a no one where like you tried to be nice to other people and they took advantage of your kindness. You like grew up and like you moved to Canada where like you, even in Malaysia, like you never spoke competently. You know, it's either like you're not good enough at Chinese or not good enough at English. And then you move to Canada and it like that must have been kind of shocking and different. You know, you started eating this, these bologna and ketchup sandwiches. And then, you know, one would think that you were super sad because you didn't talk to anyone for a year. You had no friends and maybe even two. And then you started to learn magic when you were in the 11th grade. And then you began to see that, oh, like if I entertain people like they'll like me, mm -hmm. right? Like the way to make friends is to like make other people happy. And so then like, you know, it's interesting because when you say, oh, like I really wasn't sad, I believe you. I, I think that that was just your experience. It's sort of like, you know, if I was born in the year 200, I'm never going to miss the internet because I just didn't realize it's a thing. Like, I remember I went to, you know, I used to go to India a lot and visit, like, my ancestral village. And and there was a kid there that was my age that was like, you know, when you come here, do you take an airplane? And I was like, yes, I take an airplane. And then he was like, why don't you, how do you not fall out of the airplane? <laughs> and I just laughed, right? Because here, this guy's never, like, he's like, even a car is, like, a big deal. Like, most of the time, it's carts that are being pulled by bulls and, or buffalo. And so, like, you know, when you're going pretty fast, it's easy to fall out of the cart. And he's like, if you're going really fast, like, can't you? Let's just, it was your experience. And now what I'm hearing is that you've, you've become an amazing person. Like, you're clearly, like, you're a good dude. You help people. 
You get enjoyment out of it. I don't think you're a sociopath or anything like that. But then I think that there's this weird dilemma that you don't even know exactly how to recognize. And like sometimes when you talk about emotions, it's like it gets pretty confusing pretty quickly. Because I think sometime, some, somewhere along the way, you learn how to turn down the volume on your emotions and like put on a show. You become mm -hmm. toast. And like when I asked you at the beginning, what do you want to want me to call you? And you're like, yeah, I feel uncomfortable if people call me Jeremy. I, I thought you said something like that. And it's like, OK, like that's fine. Right. But so you've become toast. And even then, when you think about like there are people that you care about from high school and you're you need an excuse to reach out to them. And it's like, why is that? And it's kind of weird. Like, I understand it. I understand it 100 percent. And I think it's it's because like you're toast to the Internet. Toast is a cool guy. Toast is someone that everyone wants to be friends with. Toast is legit. But with your friends, you're Jeremy. Like, Jeremy is like a different kind of guy. And so then we get into some of this weird stuff, like when you're, you know, even as you come on here, like there are a lot of like calculations going in your mind. Like, okay, am I making content? Like, what are people expecting? How do I give people what they want? Because that's just, it's become, I was about to say second nature to you, but actually it's become first nature to you. Mm -hmm. You're always thinking about content and, and stuff like that. And I have mm -hmm. no intention to, you know, ask you a thousand questions so that you start crying on stream and shit. Like, we're not going to do that. Because mm -hmm. I think you'll play that role far too well. But I think that somewhere along the way, there's a part of you that's like struggling a little bit to like know whether is this person going to like toast or is this person just here for toast? Or are they willing to accept like what's underneath? So I think you test people. I think the reason you're mean with people is because you test them. And and you kind of like see how they'll react. And oddly enough, it's it's kind of like the people I think that you'll feel it, it, this could get into weird patterns where sometimes when you test people, it's actually like reassuring to you in some way, depending on how they respond, because it means they're willing to accept the person who isn't doing magic tricks. And then like the closer you get to them, the more of the authenticity you show. And it's interesting, right? Because you're a little bit risque. I think that's become a part of your persona, but I think it's a part of you too, because I don't know if you know what you can like what people can handle like how much of, here's the question how much of jeremy or toast can people handle because i guess in your mind you don't think it's very much i don't like getting too close to people i respect not that anyone close to means i don't respect them but more just I don't know, that familiarity when you become like, when someone's cool, but you get to know them really well, suddenly they're not as cool because you know them, you know, like, uh, you know, let's say you meet Brad Pitt and after you friends with him for like three years, he's not Brad Pitt anymore. He's just your buddy Brad kind of deal. Um, Getting, I feel like the more people know me, the less they, I'm afraid they'll find out something that makes them respect me less or something. Um, I'm not as impressive. So maybe it's better not to become too close with people. What's wrong with you not being impressive? Why do you need to be impressive? I don't know. Everyone wants other people to think well of them, right? Sure, uh, of course they do. Yeah. So, but I I think you're kind of stuck here, Toast. Because who do they think well of? When you get respect from someone else, who are they respecting? Toast or Jeremy? I feel like. I feel like they're the same person at this point. Okay. Right, but then does Toast let people know who he is? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Like, when you talk about Jeremy and you talk about Toast, like, in my mind, they're the same person. Okay. 
at this point. I don't know if there's any separation. What? Why do you need an excuse to reach out to your friends from high school? Ah,、uh, it's just like an email you received like a month ago that you meant to reply to, but you didn't, and now it's been two years. And you're looking at that email, you're like, "God, I really should reply, huh?" But now it's awkward since it's been so long. I don't want to reply out of nowhere, so I'm just gonna wait until I have a reason to do so because I feel like. I should have responded, and the fact that I didn't makes me a bad friend, and it's kind of like I'm a little embarrassed to go back and reply to that email from two months ago out of nowhere, and not like. Did they reach out like, to you and you didn't respond? Yeah, it was.、Uh, they just said, you know, Happy New Year's. Hope you're doing well. And that was like January first. Yeah, January first, like. Twenty twenty, so like a year and five months ago. Okay, that turned out to be far more mundane than I was expecting. That makes perfect <laughs> sense, man. If it's just a, it's been too long to respond. Like that carries its own. That has nothing to do with toast and Jeremy and all that stuff. That's just like, you know, you haven't responded to someone for like eighteen months. So it's sort of like, yeah. Like I, I I'd be happy to like see them again. But it's just—it seems so foreign that part of my life, like people I knew before I became a content creator. What's your sense of why you've only had one real romantic relationship? Well, I like to think my best traits aren't visible right away.、Um, Also, I'm really bad at talking to people. I feel like、uh, dating people is a little bit of a numbers game. Like the more people you meet,、um, I think you're very good at talking to people. What are you talking about, bro? But that's because you know me from when I'm a content creator, right? Ah, so yeah, there is、yeah. a difference. Yeah.、Uh, well, for the first twenty six. Well, twenty five, twenty five years of my life, like I wasn't a content creator.、Uh, I just went to school and worked like a computer programming job, and that's not very interesting, in my opinion.、Uh, there was just not a lot of girls in my life that I can even talk to. Not that I will talk to them because I have no game,、um, but. One of the nice things about being content creator is just like people how on know who I am and like have hold on、idea. a second. Sorry, I gotta interrupt. How on earth do you not have game? Uh, well, I I would never just talk to a girl, you know. Like I used to think, not like an incel, but more like um. I had this idea that the more you have in common with a girl, the higher chances of her liking you is. So, like, I once found out that a girl I was into liked TV show、uh, The Office, and I'm like, okay, so if I watch The Office and I have something to talk about with her, that's gonna up my odds.、Um, it was this idea that affection equals attraction when they're very two two very separate things. Um. So, like, my、okay. understanding of what is attractive to a girl was really off. So, are you telling me that the reason that you're not in a relationship right now is because you don't know how you have no game? Uh, that's the reason why I didn't have like a relationship for the first twenty five years. Since becoming a content creator and a mega Chad, I have learned that.、Uh, It's hard, like, like when it comes to what relationships, isn't it just you're either gonna end up with them for the rest of your life, or it's just a temporary thing, and you shouldn't get too attached. That's a question. I'm I'm curious why you know is that is that why you're not in a relationship because. 
yeah, I I don't think I'm ready to like go into a relationship in the with a mindset that this like I'm gonna make this work and this is the expectation that we're gonna be together for the rest of our life. Because I feel like that should be like the mindset you have. Not necessarily like this has to work out, but more like you should get into a relationship with the expectation that and that's going to work out and you guys are going to get married. But So you're not, you have game now. <laughs> right? I have fame now. And I have, like, it's easier for me to believe that so, girls so are into me for me. Toast, you're, you're doing something slippery. You're being slippery. So when I ask you what, like, because here's the thing. Every now and then, you give me a really good answer. And it's one that makes a lot of sense and one that I can't push back at at all. Like, if you're like, oh, like, I'm not ready for a relationship, like, you know, because like the relationships are about commitment and like, I'm just not ready to commit. And it's like, bro, like, you know, if you're not ready for a relationship, it makes perfect sense. Like, if that's really the reason, like, absolutely makes perfect sense while you're not in a relationship. But when I push and I say, is the reason you're not in a relationship right now because you're like not ready for a commitment and you can say like, but then we get to this fame and game stuff. And like, that's where like, <laughs> someone doesn't smell right. It's like, I think what we're hearing is like the answer from the mask. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is like, it makes perfect sense. And I'm not saying it's wrong, but I think there's something else like underneath, which is like, what you have now is fame. So like, who are they dating? Hmm. And so if at some point Toast becomes... I'm just going to keep going. Okay? So if at some point Toast becomes Jeremy, what do they do? They leave the nest and never come back. Mm -hmm. Right? Because then it, 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 that, at that point, it's like, you know, Brad Pitt becomes your buddy Brad. Beautifully put. And so like what I'm what I and, and this this could be like I, I may not be right here, Toast. I I'm really not sure because like I'm just gonna keep going though. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I, I don't even know how much of this is gonna resonate, but like what I'm kind of feeling from you is like somewhere in there there's like some general reluctance for you to let people because we've heard this, like we've heard like snippets of it, and maybe I'm putting together a puzzle piece that's not like, you know, a puzzle that's not really there, but it's like like, I think at some point you've got to let people get to know Jeremy, right? You've got to stop being the entertainer. You've got to, like, start... Because you have game, bro. Like, you have, like forget about the fame. You, like, 100% have game. Like, you know you do. Actually, maybe you don't know. But you've got game. Like, I, I you know how to talk to people. For fuck's sake, dude. You know how to talk to people. Maybe I'm wrong. Like, maybe you don't feel that way. But, like, I, I think that there's no way that the entertainer skills don't translate. Like, it's not... Because you're right that, like, Jeremy and Toast have become, like, blended. Like, you know how to, like... You know how to bring the best out of people's potential. Like, you don't... Uh, what? Also, look at yourself in the mirror sometime. Like, you've got game, bro. <laughs> uh... Uh, one thing I will say, <clears throat> it feels like it's a little easier in this scene because most gamers are not that socially aware. And it's just because I've been a streamer for so long that it, it came eventually, like being able to talk to people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, now I feel a little more comfortable, but it's also... It makes me feel a lot better going to conversations that people know who I am. Um, because it makes me more comfortable. Uh, not that nah, I didn't know I'm a big deal, but more like um, they would find me interesting to talk to. Right. So, so this, this is, I, I think it may be hard toast, but like, why do you think they wouldn't find you interesting to talk to anyway? Mm, I mean, I don't really stand out. Like, if you take away 
you know, the fact that I am a streamer, like what you what you end up with is what you can find anywhere, right? Like uh, some form of higher education uh, into like slightly sarcastic personality, a little above average IQ, but not very productive. Goes on Reddit a lot. Um, and not a lot of experience with women. I feel like uh, stuff like that, like people Sounds. like that are Sounds. so common. Sounds perfect. I'm serious. Because like, sure, those are some of your attributes, but that's not actually who you are. You're engaging, intelligent, funny, kind. Uh, but people don't see that, right? Like, How can yeah. they when you don't let them? Uh, I mean, people don't have a reason to even try to find out, right? Why well, put in effort? Like, I don't put in effort with someone who might be, like, hiddenly entertaining or, like, talented. Like, I only put in effort once I see bits and pieces of it, right? So why not just go get to know someone who is interesting versus like who might be interesting. Fair point. Right. So, but I, I think that this is where I imagine we're going to land. I hope we land somewhere in the middle because you're right that like, if someone is an introvert who doesn't talk to anyone, like, I don't know why I would go and try to get to know them really well for the option of like, you know, becoming, you know, falling in love and spending the rest of our lives together. On the flip side, at the other end of the spectrum is toast that everyone knows everything about and all the work has been done and they feel like they know who you are. And then you're kind of trapped in the middle because if you lean too heavily on toast, eventually they're going to get to know Jeremy. And then Brad Pitt becomes your buddy Brad. Beautiful, by the way. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And then at the other end of the spectrum is like the ninth grader who, who no one will speak to. Who, and I, I know this is where now like things get a little, little bit tricky because was that person worth knowing? Mm. Mm. No, I don't think so. I think... I think in this world, society, <laughs> uh, I think just in this, at least in this scene, the streaming scene, it's like sink or swim kind of deal. Like if we constantly think about like what someone could be, um, it's really hard because you can, you can help so much people, right? There are so much small streamers who are struggling out there, who, you know, are just looking for that chance. But my, my like way of thinking when it comes to stuff like this is like, bro, it's up to you to make yourself interesting. And like, it's up to you to entice people to want to get to know you better. Right. Like you might be interesting underneath all that and, you know, have a lot of potential in you, but people shouldn't have to go like finding out. Right. Yeah. So that's kind of, it's, in, I think it makes a lot of sense, but like, I also think it's weird to hear you say that because there are a lot of people out there with a lot of potential. Whereas like, what are you good at toast? Mm. You're good at bringing people's potential out. Yeah, I would say so. Which sounds to me like a little, like now I get confused because I, I'm with you. Like, so I think every, in a sense, everything you're saying makes sense that if you want to make it as a streamer and if you want to, like, I think this is true. Like if you want to find a, a good partner, you got to advertise. Like they're not going to come, you know, like dig underneath layers and layers of stuff. But I, I think that there's like, you're kind of like, I, I'm feeling you, I'm feeling that this conversation keeps bouncing between two extremes, which is one is like, you know, there's a part of you that's toast and you should ab absolutely advertise your good qualities. And like, that's a piece of it. 
But I think there's this other weird thing where like underneath toast and the reason you like being toast is because, you know, I'm just going to put it out there. This is a no brainer. Like fundamentally somewhere down there, I think you feel a little bit unlovable. Right. Like you feel mm -hmm. like there's like a like a touch of the ugliness in there. And like we hear it manifest in weird ways. Like I have fame, but I don't have game. Bro, you have tons of game. Like hate to break it to you. Because I, I think you can't, it's not just your fame. It's like, it's the things that made you famous, which you have, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's it's that part that it's your ability to make other people laugh. It's your ability to like notice things in the world around you and be a little bit sarcastic. Like your persona is a part of who you are. But I think like underneath, like there's still the ninth grader. And so when it goes back to high school, it's like you become successful. You become someone that everyone wants to be friends with. Apparently, you become someone that we DM once a month asking <laughs> you to come on stream because you're hot shit. Mm -hmm. And so I think you end up like testing people to see like, what if I'm not toast? Like, what if I don't act? What if I don't entertain? Like, what will you think about me then? And it's been you've been doing it for so long that like the two have gotten tangled up and all you are is toast. But I think that there's, you know, when you talk about the wall, like, I think the reason the wall is there is because you're afraid of what's on the other side, which is someone that's not worth knowing. And then we get stuck because that will always be true until you let the wall down, you let someone see what's on the other side, and they're like, yeah, that guy's cool. And the reason I keep on hammering on a romantic relationship is because I think that you're not going to, or it's going to be hard to succeed in a romantic relationship until you do that. Cause I don't know that you can be an enter entertainer like 24 seven for the, your like, like significant other. Oh, <laughs> uh, the solution is to just be entertaining all the time from the sounds of it. Like, I, I guess that's the way I think like, I understand why it's it's not the solution, bro. It's the problem. Because do you see what you're doing to yourself? I'm elevating myself by constantly pushing myself forward. Sort yeah. I mean, you're 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 trapping yourself by going to higher and higher elevations. It's like you're yeah. like a cat that climbs up the tree and doesn't know how to get down. Like the solution is not for you to be entertaining a hundred percent of the time. It's the opposite. How does that sound to you? I would rather just figure out a way to be even more entertaining, honestly. Okay. Um, so, so, toast? Yeah, go keep going, sorry. It's, it's just like, you know, I start off as a someone who just posts infographics on Reddit, right? And then I became a Hearthstone YouTuber. And then a Hearthstone streamer, and then a TFT streamer, and it moved to, moved to California, and like became like not just a Hearthstone gamer, but like a content creator that collabs with other content creators, and then you know offline TV, and then Among Us blowing up, and now like being friends with like even like people who I I look up to or like content I used to watch, right? It's just. Like this career is just a constant sense of like, you know, let's let's keep going, let's keep going. Like I wanna work in Hollywood, I wanna write a script, I wanna like meet Taylor Swift kind of deal. I wanna be friends with Taylor Swift kind of deal. Um, but it, it, there's a sense of just constantly elevating yourself, right? And because we see streamers become irrelevant very often. Um, they might have 10,000 viewers one day and like next year the game dies or, you know, they take a break and become irrelevant and yeah, it's just constantly pushing yourself to raise yourself up. That sounds exhausting. Mm, yeah. You know, in terms of job, like it's a it's a pretty good gig. You know, it's... what are you hearing me say? Uh, you said it sounded exhausting. 
Yeah, but in general, like, do you get the sense? I feel like I'm trying to present something to you, and I, I don't think we're on the same page. What do you think? What What are you hearing me uh, when when I try to understand you? What are you hearing? Mm -hmm. Like, what's your impression of what I think is going on with you? Uh, impression is that I revolve a lot of my identity and self-worth and being like an entertainer and like you said it's exhausting or it's like people like constantly having to like push and like being entertained 24 7 like you it's definitely meant to be taken as not a great thing, right? As a tiring thing to do over and over again. Uh, but is, 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 that, is that it? Um, it, it just feel, feels like uh, like the scene is it's very dog-eat-dog kind of deal. And that's kind of what I like about it as well. So... Yeah, I, I think that's that's a good summary. What what are you what are you hearing? I'm at. What am I advocating that you do? Mm. Not revolve my self worth about around like like I should do things. I don't know. People like should I learn to do things that's not content? Should I pick up a hobby for myself for my like? own mental health but what if my own mental health is just like my hobby is being an entertainer right okay so i'm gonna ask you one more question toast you can dodge as many questions as you want to please be completely honest with this one no dodging allowed okay mm -hmm. on a scale of one to ten of stupidity ten being this is the stupidest idea that's ever been conceived in the world and one is this is absolutely brilliant uh -huh. What do you think about the plan that I'm advocating for you? Is uh -huh. it just the dumbest fucking shit you've ever heard of? Or is it absolutely brilliant? Uh-huh. Uh, what's this plan specifically? To try to be less of an entertainer. To oh, try to show people. Uh, huh? which, one, which number was the dumb one? Ten is a dumb one. Then it's ten. Okay. Good. Uh, like... Yeah, I mean, my my career is based on being entertaining. Like, I completely. That's, yeah, it'd be crazy to not think about content all the time. And I, like, it's like I also enjoy doing it. It was something like, oh god, I hate doing content, or like I can't think about that stuff right now. That makes sense. But like, the idea of getting more people to like me is really appealing to me. Like on social media like what posts would people want um i agree like it, great it, like, why is it sometimes appealing? i try and force things sorry go why, ahead. why do you why do you want to be bigger i believe i was i am destined to have a big impact on the world it's like main character syndrome i have that like, there's no way I've been put on this earth to just be a regular person. Um, I'm here to have an impact, like a big impact. And, I, you know, it might be on my deathbed that I realized, oh, turns out I was just slightly above average. But, like, even now, my expectation is that in 10 years, I would have done, or 10 or 20 years, that I would have done something that leaves a huge impact on the world. And I think at this rate, it might be something in the entertainment scene. Um, maybe in 20 years, that streaming, you know, it's like you got, you got music and then you have movies and TV and streaming is like right alongside of it. And like people will remember me as... I don't know, 
a Walt Disney of streaming or Steven Spielberg of streaming. Um, I, it could end up being something else. Like, I don't know, maybe I start caring about world hunger or something. But um, that's why I want to get bigger all the time. It's like I'm fulfilling my quote unquote destiny. Beautiful. Love it. How do you feel about sharing that? Uh, you think you overstepped a little bit, showed a little bit of what's underneath the mask? No, I've talked about this a little okay. bit. This also feeds into my whole ego persona, which is why I'm okay with it. And uh, a lot of people say, like, everyone's the main character in their own story, right? But I have met people who are just content with life in terms of, like, you know, being an accountant, starting a family. And that's what the majority of people end up doing. Um, but I feel like there's that subset of people who I'm going to be a famous Hollywood star and then move to California and things don't work out. I, I just have this expectation that things will always work out for me because it's meant to work out for me, right? So, Toast, I actually owe you an apology. Why? Because I think I was trying to lead you somewhere, and I think that was a mistake. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm still pretty confident that I'm right about most of what I said. I just don't think it's like... I don't think it matters right now. Oh, well, what did you learn from uh, what I said just now? So you want to make an impact, right? Yeah. I'm like, what is the nature of the impact that you're looking for? To leave a legacy. Mm -hmm. To be remembered. To be noticed. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and what I see that as is like, you're never going to be the ninth grader who doesn't talk to anyone ever again. And you're going to rise so high that no one will ever be able to leave you behind where you are the ceiling. You determine the ceiling. You are the measure against which other people aim to be. You know, and like that's when you'll be secure. Like when you're absolutely on top is when you don't have to worry about being left behind. Like, and so I, I see what drives you. I think it's great that it drives you. I think it's actually very adaptive. I think it's going to cause you a lot of suffering years from now. But I think that maybe that's what we need to have another conversation. If, 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 so this is what I'll leave, with, leave you with, okay? I think it's great that you're driven to be the best, to be this wonderful thing. And I think it's like, I'm, my head is so far up my ass in terms of thinking that you should... It's really a mistake on my part. Like I was applying my own value system to you. How old are you now, Toast? If you don't, uh, twenty nine. Okay, so I'm like a decade older than you are. I'm married. I have kids and all that kind of stuff. So like my position is is different from yours. Mm -hmm. Um, I for what it's worth, I felt the same way that you did many many years ago. Um, so I, I'd say that really like my my the mistake that i made is i was trying to have a conversation with you that was like potentially a decade too early maybe it'll never be there maybe actually you'll you know you'll end up in a completely different place and the conversation will never be appropriate mm -hmm. but i'm still hearing i think the mistake that i made is that i i get the sense that i mean i think i'm i'm pretty confident that your drive to succeed comes from a sense of inadequacy what do you think about that uh i can agree with that um i find myself when it comes to like relationships and dating i tend to gravitate towards girls that are having problems with their lives or like needs to be fixed in some way or just like yep that i can be of use Besides just like being smart or being funny or being caring, but like actual direct use, like 
Yeah, um, you can demonstrate I, your value in the relationship. You can bring yeah, something. Yeah, right? demonstrating value is very important. Right? And yeah. like, why does someone need to demonstrate value, Toast? That I mean, that's just how humans work, right? Like, if you're going to date someone, you got to demonstrate value so that nope, they are worthy toast, to you. That's not how humans work. <laughs> So that, that that is how humans work. Like in a relationship, like I mean, value can be so many different things, right? If they make you laugh, you know, that's value. If they're physically fit, you know, and you are attracted to that, that's value. So if there's a key. Money, there's a key word there, which is demonstrate. Demonstrate is about showing. Mm-hmm. So I think the crazy thing here, and this is where, like, I'm gonna bark up this tree as long as I want to. It's never gonna get anywhere. Which is like, you bring value to the relationship without fixing someone's problems. Like, that's the fundamental disagreement that you and I have. What do you think about that? Right? Because, like, like this, is, this is how this works. It's like, why do you gravitate? Because you're, you're, like, halfway there. It's just, like, why do you gravitate towards people who you can fix? It's because, so you can, like, demonstrate your value. Why does demonstrating your value, like, why is that important to you? Because it solves an, an anxiety that you're not bringing value. Because if you can show them and you can show yourself, hey, look what I bring to this relationship. Then it's like, everything's fine. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? It's like very like psychologically appeasing to bring value to a relationship. There's proof. There's evidence. What do you think about that? I just don't think my best traits are visible by like just norm day to day. Sure. Um, being able to like be an entertainer and like of actual use, like solving people's problems. It's more believable for me when someone is attracted to that. Exactly. Well said. Right. But but now now there's an important word there, and I, I I'm maybe I should just stop at this point. Like, let me know. Like, does this? Do you think we're making a like? Is this worth our time, or am I just? Are we just ships passing in the night? And like, this is an unproductive conversation. What are you thinking? I need an honest answer from you, bro. I think we're on the same page in terms of like, like why my way of thinking isn't that. It's a little like I should believe in myself that you know me as a person is enough, and like people would want to get into relationships with me with just being myself. But, but, that just makes me feel better, man. Like <laughs> if, uh, if it just makes me feel a little more confident, a little less insecure. Because I I know that the bad thing about the way I think when it comes to like fixing people is eventually I'm gonna run out of things to fix, right? Like let's say I found this girl. And I fixed her up, and she's an amazing woman. But one day, she's I, if I'm doing my job correctly, she's going to be fixed. And there's nothing going to, like, there's no problem for me to solve. And, and that's when I start. Then, what, nope, what is she going to do when you fix her? Uh, well, maybe peace out. Or, nope. you know, after she's all that time, leave we leave the nest. Because she doesn't need you anymore. Because the foundation of your relationship was you being of value to her. And if the only thing that you bring to her is value and you're done with that, then she doesn't need you anymore. Oh, maybe in the time we were together, she liked what she saw and would stay. So I just got to rope him in first with... uh... Got to have the helpful. Got to have the right lure on the hook. 
Yeah. And then, you know, then I can demonstrate like Jeremy in a way. What do you think about that? Seems perfectly, perfectly fine. What's the, I mean, the downside is, oh, she leaves and I don't think I'm that foolish or naive to help someone who is only interested in like their own, their own selves or like selfish nature. I think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm really good at finding people that are good people and I think if so I'm too. helping them that they are already passed a lot of like my internal check mark. I, I think so too. But I, I do think it's important, Toast, to like recognize that at some point you're going to have to make that transition and to recognize that that transition where you show her who Jeremy is and maybe she'll stick around and she doesn't need you anymore. Like that's going to be terrifying for you. Or is it not? Am I wrong there? You seem skeptical. I'm confident, which means that I think we just, we were on the same page there. Maybe we've split. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe I used too strong of a word. Maybe I no, should have said hard <laughs> or reluctant. Uh, I think if I was like that with a girl, she would be the kind of girl to not just leave after she's fixed up. Oh, um, yeah. But, uh... but this is the problem, man. How do you know whether she's that kind of girl or not? Uh, I mean, this is all on top of my... We I know we didn't really talk about this but I also don't like being committed in a relationship right now either. So I don't think it's just me not finding the right girl as well. I think it's just I feel like when I'm dating someone, it's essentially committing the rest of my life with them. That does sound to me to be a little bit different. But but yeah. I mean if if you want me to toast, because, you know, this is, I'm a psychiatrist. I don't know if you do this, but if you knew this, but as psychiatrists, sometimes we can always find a way to prove ourselves right. Mm -hmm. It's one of the flaws of our profession. And it's one that I'm afraid I could be falling into, which is why I need your, you know, I need you to tell me, but I can twist that into exactly what we're talking about now too, if you want me to, I'm going to give it a quick <laughs> shot. Uh, no, I, I, I just think. The problem isn't uh, the girl here. I agree. What do you think the problem is? I think the bigger problem is just I... Like, it's either life or, like, death do us apart, or it's just one-time fling. Right? Yep, so so why why are you afraid to go down the death do us part route? I don't know, man. It's, it's a long time. It's, just, it's a long time. I, I Breakups are hard. Breakups are really hard. Uh, and I don't like the idea of going through a breakup. Like, it's normal for relationships to not work out. But man, I, I feel really bad having to break up with someone. To a point where I just rather not what be in is, a relationship. What's so hard about breakups? I mean, you care about this person a lot, right? But you also can't. Like, you, you're gonna. If you guys are breaking up, you reach the point where. 
it's better for you guys to not be with each other and like all that time you shared with each other like to just become essentially strangers after like so long that's that's uh i hate hurting people's feelings and it's easier to just not be in a relationship this way no one's feelings get hurt right yeah sounds very logical yeah why why does anyone ever engage in a relationship then uh, uh... Makes them happy. Would a relationship make you happy? Uh, I think until I'm okay with the idea of like breakup being a possibility, I don't think a relationship will make me happy because it's always going to be in the back of my head. Like... Well, Toast, hope you're in for the long haul because you're going to be with this person till you die. Or I hope you're ready to break someone's heart and make them cry. And like being in a relationship with that in the back of your mind the whole time gives me a lot of anxiety and like makes me feel like a fraud when I'm with the person. Like, oh God, she doesn't know that I'm going to have to break up with her eventually. Yeah. Makes sense. It sounds like you're trying to protect people. Yeah. Is that weird to say? No, no. Uh, I think because of my like whole, I gotta climb, I gotta climb. I'm afraid that I'm applying that to my romantic life as well. It's like, oh, this girl is like this, 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 and this. But what if another girl comes along that's like even Upgrade. better in every single way? And I used to feel like that more strongly. But these days, I realize um, you know, everyone is very different in their own way. And honestly, like time spent with someone is worth something, right? Like the memories you've built, the hardship you endure. Um, I used to have this attitude that there exists perfect relationships out there. But like realistically, for every human being in the world, there's like thousands of people that they can end up marrying and like living the rest of their lives out with, right? Um There's no one right person. And it's, it's crazy to think about, in my opinion, that we have this one life. And let's say there's multiple timelines. Like in this timeline, I married woman A and I'm happy and I die of old age with her. And there's another timeline, like, and I met woman B first and I can marry her as well. And I die old with her. Like, like marriage, even though it's meant to seem like such an important final choice it there's no right answer it could be not any woman but there is like multiple possibilities and that's scary because it's easy when there's the right choice but when it's like oh yeah you can end up with her grow old die together or you can end up with her and grow old and die together there's no right answer and that is a little scary to me because I kind of grew up with the whole like fairy tale romantic outcome, but I'm learning that, you know, there are some people in life you're going to be more compatible with and there are multiple partners that are suited for you to spend the rest of your life with. Makes a lot of sense, man. I can imagine yeah. how that can be kind of like bewildering, right? Because if there isn't a right answer, 
then how do you know who to pick? Yeah. Can I think for a second? Yeah, sure. How are you feeling right now? Uh, good. Okay. Good. I feel like we talked about relationships a lot. Uh, which does make me just a tiny bit uncomfortable. Uh -huh. More because I know every like my fucking friends and family are watching and they would you know, people love talking and gossiping and uh you know I feel like relationships the one thing I try to keep quiet about not for me, but for the people it might affect. Sure. I, I think you've mentioned several times. I think it's, it's, you made clear to me that from a value standpoint, you are, you're very protective of the people that you care about and that you're actually okay. Like, you know, being attacked personally or like being made fun of, but when it comes to the people that you care about, it's like the no, no zone. Yeah, because everyone has different bound. I can set my own boundaries, but yep. I would never want to so, do it for someone else. So I know that the topic is relationships. What's your understanding of why I keep on asking? Because I'm the one who's driving the relationship conversation, right? That's me in the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. Why do you think I'm driving there? Uh... Is it because I? Uh, it's the one thing I don't want to talk. Sort um, of. Like I'm hiding something there, or like. I, know, there's, I there's something there. Yep, that's that's why. Good, I, that's exactly right. So so can I explain what I think is there? Mm -hmm. So I think like the the challenge is going to be that you have too many right answers if we talk about anything else. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. So yes. it's going to be too easy to pull me into an intellectual conversation about what's good to do and what's bad to do. So I think relationships is like where like there's a lot of stuff like, you know, here that I think that you can't quite make as much of an abstract argument about. So when I when I ask you about relationships, I, I don't know if you notice, but I'm not asking anything about anyone that you've been in a relationship with. Mm -hmm. Like I get that you have that boundary. I'm you know I, I'm asking about you in the relationship, how you approach relationships, how you think about relationships, what you're afraid of. And I think mm -hmm. the reason is because the relationship is like the thing that brings the tension between Jeremy and Toast kind of like front and center for me, like out of everything we've talked about. Because I think you can be like a noble friend in your, in your like platonic relationships. I can be, I think you probably are a wonderful sibling and a wonderful son. Um, I, I think that you do right by a lot of people because you care about a lot of people. I think relationships is the one thing where like, things are going to start to feel a little bit more contradictory. It's also challenging because as a streamer, friendship is so complicated already, right? Because there's like, are we friends because we like each other? Or are we friends because we collab and we make good content together? Like, why is this person hanging out with me? It all gets tangled together, right? Because is this a professional relationship? Is it a platonic relationship? Like, it's all tangled. But what I'm hearing from you... <laughs> Toast is, is oddly enough, even though you disagree with me, I'm, I'm kind of finding that, no, I actually, you don't disagree. I, I think we're, as you mentioned, I think we're actually kind of on the same page. I think mm -hmm. you've got to continue to climb. But the, the concern that I have is at some point, I think if you want to be in a healthy romantic relationship, and you, I mean, you know these things, dude, like you're the one who's giving me the ammo because you're like, I try to date people who are busted in some way so that I can try to fix them. And then like, I know it sounds kind of weird, but I think everyone can actually identify with that. And why do you try to fix them? It's because it makes you feel good. 
right? Like they know what you're bringing to the table so that you don't have to worry about being, and sorry if this is out of line, but you don't have to worry about being ninth grade Jeremy. Mm -hmm. Because you can, you feel more comfortable with like them knowing toast because then you don't have to be ninth grade Jeremy. Mm -hmm. And you want to rise to the top of your field because if you're at the top of your field, you certainly ain't ninth grade Jeremy. So I hear, I, I see a theme, which I don't know if it's right or wrong. It's really for you to think about. And you got to tell me like, that's right or that's wrong. Because I think you do bring a lot of value to people. I think you're a very good entertainer. And I'm a little bit afraid that it's going to be hard for you to show someone. If someone knows your fame, it's going to be mm -hmm. hard for them to, like you even told us, right? Like you're, you're kind of like Brad Pitt. And your buddy Brad and making that transition is going to be hard. And there are all these different things that like I, I, the theme that I see here is that you're trying to move away from ninth grade Jeremy in as many ways as possible. Either you date someone who you can fix or you demonstrate your value because the idea that you have intrinsic value is like kind of confusing. And mm -hmm. I know that intellectually you understand that concept, but let's be clear Having intrinsic value does not make you a successful streamer. Having extra intrinsic value makes you a successful streamer. Mm -hmm. And so you have a world that reinforces this principle, which is absolutely true. And at the end of the day, life is good enough. So what are we even talking about here? Which I get completely. Because I, I here I am pushing you to change something that you don't think is not only broke. It's not broken. It's amazing. It's the reason for your success. And here's fucking this guy telling you to like be different, like show people what's underneath the mask, like show people that you, that you can be ninth grade Jeremy. And you're like, how fucking dumb is that? Mm -hmm. The whole reason that I am where I am is because I moved away from ninth grade Jeremy and I became someone else. I learned how mm -hmm. to be entertaining. I learned how to be useful to the people around me instead of someone who sits alone in the cafeteria and doesn't talk to a soul. I don't want to be that person. And you're right. Like, your success is because you aren't ninth, ninth grade Jeremy. You're disguised toast. Right? Like, you're toast. That's who you are. You bring value. You protect people. You collaborate with people. You bring, you, you bring people to their full potential. And you're going to make your mark on the world. You're going to start streaming before the first TFT streamer starts. You're going to stop streaming after the last TFT streamer starts. Mm -hmm. No way to get left behind if you're at the front of the pack. Mm -hmm. uh i like having power and authority because i trust myself to use it responsibly when it's other people at the helm like if certain people have like power or like authority over others i feel like it's not always used Fairly, like there's injustice in what other people do, and I trust myself the most that given a leadership role or like a power dynamic, that I would always make the right choice for everyone. Um, I have this big sense of, um, righteousness or like justice in my like in my world like i hate like i hate it when people are rude or bullies like i get really triggered by it and that's also one of the reasons why i push myself a lot because people are selfish and they're prone to doing stupid selfish things that put themselves ahead. It's like that marathon again, right? When I'm leading the pack, it's easy for me to look back and like see where everyone elevate is elevate other people, bring them forward yeah. too. Yeah. But I've seen what it's like for others to be like ahead of the pack. Like to have the power but not use it for others. And I don't like it when that happens. So I like that's why I feel like I need to be constantly bigger 
And also, you know, again, I don't want them leaving the nest as well. Do you actually mean that, or was that a joke? Uh, I, I do feel a little... I do feel negative feelings. Like, whether it's sadness or, like, resentment when someone just completely up and leaves. Not, like, disappear, but more just, like, hey, I'm going to associate with those guys now, you know? Like, adios. Like, adios kind of deal. I'm going to go play with those guys because uh, that's my crew now. You know, I get more viewers with them or I get more attention with them. But I, I know it's normal to want that, but it, it does feel like empty nest syndrome where I just, you know, at the very least, I wish they would come visit every now and then instead of just making it feel like ah, they forgot about us. Not just me specifically, but like, I mean, it does affect me, but like if they came back to the nest and still like played with like other friends or people they used to play with, like that's fine. But when they completely up and just only focus on their own thing and like branch out, I do feel sad. I feel sad, I guess. Yeah. I, but, so, uh, to, yeah. yeah. For what it's worth, Toast, I, I think it makes sense that you trust yourself. You know, I, I, th I think you seem like a good dude. I, I can understand why you would trust yourself. I think it's kind of tricky, though, because the more that you, the more you're forced to trust yourself, the harder it is to trust other people. And what I'm kind of hearing, even as, as, as you kind of talk about, empty nest syndrome is it's like it's like sort of a you know you talk about sadness i i'm feeling a lack of fairness a lack of reciprocity a certain not just sadness like if my dog passes away like that's sad like there's mm -hmm. a certain like not quite maliciousness but like maybe even obliviousness or lack of compassion or consideration that feels very unfair to me about what you're describing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can I can I toss one last? Uh, um, Can I test one last provocative thing your way? Sure. So I could also imagine, given what we just talked about, that you trust in yourself and it's hard to trust other people because people have, like, you know, taken advantage of your kindness and they've left you hanging. Mm -hmm. Fair? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I can imagine that it would be hard to want to be in a committed relationship. Because, like, that's kind of the situation where, like, if you're going all in and someone leaves the nest then. Because, like, that's when they're not supposed to leave, right? Like, that's the whole point of a committed relationship. It's like a promise. And, and when I just kind of put myself in your shoes for a second, like, I kind of think about what would hurt the most is it's if I go all in and they say they go all in and then they don't go all in. Mm-hmm. And that, like, I don't think I would want to open myself up to that possibility of hurt. Hmm. I feel like in all the dating I've done, you know, in the last four or five years, I've always been the one with one foot out the door. And I don't know why, like, Why do you think? Uh, I think when you have one foot out the door, you minimize the hurt. Like, oh, you can't get upset at me because I said it wasn't serious kind of deal. Or like... I just feel... 
that. Like, I feel like I'm lying to a girl when I start dating them. Because mm-hmm. I feel like the girls are always going in with, like, strong commitment with the expectations that we're going to get married. And when I enter, like, dating a relationship, it's always very... It's probably not going to work out. And I always feel like some anxiety, like, oh, I have this knowledge that it won't work out, but she doesn't know. So I'm misleading her and I should just break up with her right now. So I feel like we could dig into this more. I'm sort of, I want to be a little bit cognizant of time. So let me ask mm-hmm. you like one or two, because it's too juicy, Toast. Too much of an entertainer. Mm-hmm. You know, why do you think you have one foot out the door? Right? Because I, I get what you're saying that like, you know, it's sort of unfair to them because you have one foot out the door when things start and you try to be transparent with them. But damn it, you're such a mega Chad. They fall in love with you anyway. <laughs> mm-hmm. But what? why don't you... Let me put it this way. So let me try to reframe a little bit. Like, is it that you have one foot out the door or you only put one foot in the door? Mm. Maybe it's the second one. I don't feel like I've ever went into a relationship with really high hopes and maybe i shouldn't have gotten into those relationships in the first place so what keeps you from having high hopes i don't know i i I keep like like sometimes i wish i would come across a girl that makes me feel like bam I am ready for marriage kind of deal. Um, I don't know if a girl like that exists because I've met a lot of, you know, amazing, you know, girls or talented, but would you let yourself fall in love? Ah, I don't think so. I think I think I need to be okay with a relationship not working out. Because if I'm not okay with that, if I enter a relationship, like that anxiety eats me up. Because I have tried like dating and being in a relationship with someone and like I just remember like one weekend like that it's in the back of my head just like oh god what if we break out what if we break out what if we break out and it made me like not want to be that made me check out from the relationship like almost like in a self-sabotaging way of just like okay just, let's just get it over with then and um I feel like I would feel like that no matter who it is and that I need to somehow be okay with the idea that it's normal in a relationship for people to break up. Things don't always work out. Sure. Um, But yeah, I mean, I I think that would be wonderful. We could wave a magic wand and have you be okay with it. But I think the real question is why aren't you okay with it to begin with? I don't want to hurt people's feelings. That's rude. (laughs) Um, Like, why do that to someone you care about, right? Like, even if I we don't end up together, like if I'm dating them, it's because I care about them a lot. But where do you get the idea that things are going to end poorly, right? Because there's that thought in your head that you're just going to end up hurting her. And it's kind of interesting. Because it's sort of like this weird trap where, like, the more you like her, the more you care about her, 
you have this thought that, oh my god, we're going to break up. I don't want to hurt her. And the more you pull back. Well, if we're not breaking up, we're spending the rest of our life together, right? That's pretty scary. What's scary about that? I don't know. Like, uh, things change so fast, like, as a person as well. Like, like last year, this time, I didn't, I wasn't even playing Among Us. And now I've played Among Us and it's already ended. And it was in the span of, what, nine months? I, I don't know what the future will hold, you know? Like, when, when I think about divorces, honestly, it's comforting. Because at the end of the day, people get divorces all the time, right? And I should be okay with breakups. People break up all the time. People get divorced. All That's why there's divorce lawyers. It's so common that there's a law specialization dedicated to divorces. Um, but... I think I would want to know that I am going to marry this person before I start dating them, which is almost impossible because you kind of make that decision once you're in a relationship with them. I think it's a very good insight. What would it mean if you knew ahead of time that you were marrying someone? What would that do for your mind? I think it'd be a lot more comforting and wash away my anxiety I think like so i too. wish yeah like what would it wash I, away like the idea that i'll be hurting someone like i'm okay with the idea of spending the rest of my life with someone like that part isn't scary the part that's scary is like it not working out and you have to have the conversation of a divorce or a breakup yeah so i i see that's where i think it makes a lot of sense toast i, I think i'm gonna once again kind of like i think there's a tricky thing right because when you've got one foot out the door part of the reason sometimes the reason that people have one foot out the door is so that they're not left in the room when the other person leaves and I'm, I don't know if it's like bias on my part, but I'm hearing like this theme of like uncertainty, like Among Us was everything nine months ago. And like, I can't count on it being there now. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I think it's tricky because like, there's something else that I'm translating in my mind, which is that you care about other people and you don't care about yourself. So like, there it is again, where it's sort of like, oh, like, you know, my friends come first, other people come first, I don't want to hurt this person. But like, what I, what I, I think it's hard, because what about them hurting you? And I think this mm. is why, like, you know, I asked you earlier, would you let yourself fall in love with someone? And you said, no. <laughs> and that makes perfect sense to me. Because as long as you're not in love, like, they're not going to leave you behind. They're not going to leave the nest one day. When you talk about a fear of commitment, I think it's, I think it's weird. It's not that you're wrong here. I think it's just, I'm sensing more than what you're saying, which is that I think you genuinely are like a really good person and you try really hard to like protect your friends and care about people that you love. But I think like sometimes it's kind of hard because I don't think you let yourself feel the same way about them that they do that they feel about you because you are a giga chad. And so they do fall in love. And then when you break up with them, because you've had one foot out the door the whole time and they get confused because they love you so much, but they can feel you pulling away. And then you feel bad because you can see it happening and you can see yourself not being able to love them back. And then you like leave and then they feel hurt. And then you're like, oh my God, it's going to happen again because I can't let myself love. And you're damn right. It's going to happen again. Until you let yourself fall in love, bro. And that's going to be scary because if you fall in love, maybe you're going to be in the room. You're going to be decorating. You're going to be organizing your shelves. And one day you're going to come home and there's going to be no one there. Honestly, I, I thought about this. It's like, 
I wish, I sometimes secretly wish I was in that position of the, of being the one who's being hurt. I, I think I would much rather have a girl break up with me than me breaking up with a girl. Because mm -hmm. if the girl broke up with me and I'm sad about it, that means... That means that, you know, at least I cared a lot, right? And sure. it also means I didn't have to be the one. You like be the one hurting someone else. Yeah. You're the one who's suffering. You're the one who's yeah. alone. Yeah. Cause are you, are you good at being alone toast? Yeah. I love being alone. Well, not, not like love, love, but, uh, mm -hmm. there is some sense of comfort in being alone every now sure. and then. Has there been a period of your life where you felt very alone, but even in a weird way, sad, but not sad? Mm. Like sadness feels normal. Hmm. I don't think so. Not like sad, sad, but <laughs> more just irrelevant. Yeah. Sounds like ninth grade Jeremy. So I, I know you're comfortable being that. Like I said, irrelevant, you know, is now I feel like I'm really pushing you to accept what I'm saying. So that's a mistake, but I just love it if you think about it. I mm -hmm. think like irrelevant is such a good word. Oh man, it says so much, right? It says so much about your ambitions, your legacy, the mark that you want to make on the world. And I think this is where like, I know it's like, <laughs> I'm barking up the wrong tree here, but I don't think you need to do anything else to be relevant. Toast. And mm. I, I know that's good perplexing to you, so that's fine. We can just kind of agree to disagree there, but. Mm -hmm. I think what you've accomplished in this life is enough. I think you've had a very powerful impact on a lot of individuals. And you'll say that too, but you won't accept it if I say it to you. Uh, I feel like I haven't had the impact I want because the gaming scene is so small. Like, Sure. So it's uh, it's growing, but and I I want to be at the forefront of it. Um, but I am not satisfied with what I've done. Yeah. So I I I support you a hundred percent in wanting to do more. If you feel like your work on this earth is not complete yet, and that mm -hmm. you have like something more that you need to offer the world then by all means, go for it. Like, seriously, I, I support you 100%. I sometimes worry that that can come at the cost of yourself. And I know you're willing to pay that price. I know that helping other people get, brings you a lot of fulfillment. So I, I don't get the sense that you're like, sacrificing every day oh my god it's so hard to be me <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> you know like you enjoy life like it's good so I'm, I'm not saying it that way but you know i think there's something to be said of of there's accomplishing something and making the world a better place is a wonderful thing and that doesn't that's not the only thing that makes you relevant and that's where i think we diverge which is fine. You know, I'm, I'm okay with that. You okay with that? Mm, yeah. Um, I think it's just a streamer mindset. Like, I know, like, everyone has intrinsic self-worth, but 
I just happened to like thrive in their industry that is very numbers based. And yep. uh, yeah. So here's here's what I'd kind of leave you with. Um, you know, if you have additional questions or anything, let me know. Um, I'd say that if at some point you decide that you want to better understand, if you want to learn why you have one foot in in the door and one foot out the door, if you want to work through some of those anxieties that you have at the beginning of the relationship, I think that's something that can be done. I, I don't know exactly what the follow-up is there. I'm, I'm not saying you... I can do it for you. I'm not saying that you have to do it with me. You can definitely do it with anyone. You can do it by yourself. You can do it with a friend. But uh, that's the one thing that I can get behind you in terms of like you not having fulfilled your destiny yet and that you're destined for something greater. 100% I'm with you. So be bigger. Do more. Go outside of gaming. I think it's like, mm -hmm. I think you've got to do that. I think it's, you're gifted. And I don't know that anyone else can do what you're supposed to do. And at the same time, if you're having trouble in your romantic relationships, if you find yourself crossing 30 and wondering maybe you do want to settle down, and you find yourself like recognizing that you're looking for short-term things, but that there's a part of you that may want longer-term things, now you've got to be careful because there's a part of your mind that is going to tell you that short-term things are better than long-term things. Mm -hmm. And if I had to give you one piece of advice, Toast, it would be be careful about what's better for you and what you want. And be careful about your mind convincing you that's, that what is better for you is what you want. Because those are actually two different things. And as long as you believe, as long as you do what's better for you, I don't think, I think it's going to be really hard for you to fall in love. Because love isn't better for you. It's fucking dumb. It's foolish and it's dangerous and it's risky and it can hurt you and it can hurt them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, sometimes you got to make that deck that's all legendaries because <laughs> it's not about making the best deck. Like, fuck the meta. It's mm -hmm. about the memes. Maybe, maybe one day. I feel, I feel like with like mental health and stuff, just like coming on the show, like these conversations help nudge me in the right direction. But at the end of the day, the subject needs to, you know, they gotta want to like hmm? fix something about themselves or like change their way of thinking right yep so i apologized once for pushing you because i felt like i was leading instead of following I'm happy to do it again i think you're right i don't think you want to what i'm saying is that if one day you change your mind mm -hmm. you know and you're looking for some kind of support shoot me a dm just gotta send me a message i'm ready to love dr k <laughs> uh yeah give it a give it a couple more years like i said once you cross 30 <laughs> let me know if you change your mind because uh, i don't think it. there's anything wrong with what you're doing now for the record i think it's just mm -hmm. if you decide that you want to do things differently that we can have another conversation about it and i apologize for imposing my own value system it, it took me a little while to figure out where you are where you are and that maybe where I want you to be is like, that's where I want you to be, but it's not where you are. And it's not where you want to be, which is like my mistake. So I'm sorry for that. No, oh, no worries. Yeah. I think, uh, I'm very stubborn. Like I am very confident in the way I think mm -hmm. sometimes to a fault, like to a point of stubbornness and, uh, Yeah, it'll, it'll probably, it usually takes me, like, a while to slowly, like, think about it from other angles. Um, but, 
like conversations like this is really helpful because it makes me think, you know, let's maybe think about it from another angle, just even as a thought experimentation. So, yeah, I'll uh, think about love and relationships a little more. But. That one last thing is think about, do you have one foot out the door or do you only ever put one foot in? I think you know, uh, you're right. I, I do just put one foot in. Yeah. So it, 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 right? So why won't you put both, both feet in? Uh, just think about it. It's just too risky. To, not to me, but to the other person. Yeah, I mean this. Anyway, maybe we can, because then I, I just uh, like I, I, I want to wrap this up, but it's just too juicy. Yeah, you know, you're you're baiting me into playing a twisting nether before you like do something <laughs> else. It's like that's what I feel like. It's like I'm gonna spend all my entire turn eight mana to just wipe your board, and it's like so juicy. Uh, uh, right. Yeah. Um. This was a good talk. Good yeah, talk. man. Thank you very much. Um, I, you know, I, I hope that this ends up okay for you. You know, if you have any kind of negative fallout or anything like that, please let us know. Um, so far, knock on wood, it hasn't happened yet. But you know, sometimes people reveal things, people will troll them, things like that. We'd love to help you clean up a mess that we created. Uh huh. Um. And I'm I'm sorry that I didn't quite listen to you as well as I I could have. I don't know. I I felt like you did fine. Like I think um, part of like it's because it's hard to just like talk to a person and have like to try and f figure out certain things off what you see online. So um, I mean, it didn't feel like you said anything that warrants any kind of. Uh, Second guess is so apologies. I, I felt really comfortable. Okay. I'm and, happy to hear that. Uh, yeah. It was uh good times. I like I like talking about dreamer life stuff. Mm -hmm. So I mean it doesn't have to be like a Dr. K session. Like if you ever want to just have me come on and talk about like the mindset of a streamer or whatever. So I'm always very open to it. Sure. I, I, I'm hearing a, you. I'm hearing you say you're open to it, but I'm confused mm -hmm. about whether there's an invitation there or not. Uh, I mean, I'm really lazy, so I don't normally reach out. But like, if you have, because I don't know what other like segments you do, but if you ever do a segment that needs a streaming expert. Or uh, anything that you think I'd be a good fit for, then yes, I would be happy to come on and give my two cents. If you even want that, not that I'm inviting myself to spread my ingeniosity around. I feel like this is another one foot in the door, one foot out the door kind of thing. Ah, like, yeah, do I just don't know to, what do, else is, you have is, going on. No, so, but, but here's, here's, I, I, I'm honestly toast. I'm just confused. So like, uh -huh. do you think that we, there's an important conversation that needs to be, because I'm, I'm, I'm getting signals from you, but the words don't seem to be matching up. So are uh, what I'm hearing from you is that there are a lot of important things about being a streamer, which need to be talked about. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Like streamer problems. Like when some streamers complain about, oh yeah. Yeah. I read a bad comment in chat and made me really sad. I see them get like flack for it because it's like, bro, you're making money playing video games. Why are you focusing on one negative comment when there's so much positive comments? And like, it just conditioned these streamers to, oh God, better not complain about anything then. Um, I like uh, talking about those stuff. Okay. Because my friends go through it. And, okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 I understand now. Thank you for thank you very much for explaining that. And and I, I'm also hearing you also there's another message that I'm hearing in that is that this isn't gonna be a conversation between Dr. K and Jeremy. This is gonna be a conversation between two streamers about 
mental health related stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, it's a, it's like commentary about the industry as opposed to a personal conversation. Yeah, uh, 100%. I feel like okay. I got most yeah. of the things I want to talk about out with this session. Yep. I'm, I'm and, hearing the same thing. Thank yeah. you so much for clarifying. Yeah, I'm totally down. Like, I, I don't know what that looks like or how that looks, but I'm totally interested in, in talking about the scene and the industry as well. Because um, I, I find it fascinating. So, yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on, Toast. Um, you know, we'll, I get that you're lazy. And then, you know, <laughs> you know we, may, we may reach out to you. And then I don't know if, how often we should reach out to you. And then I don't know how much time has passed before you feel bad reaching back out to us. But you can, you know, if we send you a message next week and you don't do anything about it for six months, feel free to message <laughs> us after six months. No big deal. And no, uh, if, we're, if we're hammer messaging you, you, just like let us know and we'll back off. So right. thanks a lot, dude. And good luck. Um, good luck with your collabs. It sounds like you're helping a lot of people grow and stuff like that. So more power to you. I know I've personally heard a lot of awesome things about um, you being in other people's lives and that a lot of people really appreciate you for who you are. Um, so thank you for doing that. Oh, happy to do it. Yeah, thank, uh, thank you for having me on. Um... I uh, appreciate your time and what you do for not just me, but uh, a lot of my friends. And I mean, this maybe just ties back to like the way I think, but like the biggest thing you did for me was, wasn't this, is what you did for like Yvonne and Lily and Skara and Pokey and Michael. And, you know, that's really important because they are not as um, good at expressing their emotions. And uh, I thought your platform was very, very important to them. So Okay. Yeah, I appreciate well, that. Yeah, it was, it was my pleasure. I, I love talking to each and every one of those people. You all have a really amazing crew at OTV. Really solid folks. So Thank you. take care, Toast. All right. All right, good talk. Bye-bye, everyone. Farewell. All right. Toe stars. Yeah, so that was... Uh...